Hi everyone, I am Jonathan Bradley. I'm Head of Studios and Innovative Technologies at the University Libraries and uh, I'm going to be GMing for this session of the Role of Play in which we will be exploring Stephen Crane's The Open Boat. Um, I will talk a little bit more in detail about the work of literature um, in a future Roll Call episode, but we will probably just go ahead and dive right in to this session. Um, but I will take a moment and let our players introduce themselves and their characters. Uh, and we will start with Kira Dietz. Oh, uh, we got no guidance on directions on introduction, so I'll just make it up as I go. Improv. Uh, my name's Kira Dietz. I am the Assistant Director of Special Collections and University Archives. You have, if you're uh, not a first-time watcher, you have seen me GM and appear on stream in this game. Uh, because I love role-playing games. And also literature. Uh, I haven't read this story in a while, so they should be fun. Uh, but tonight I will be playing uh, Virgil Parker, who is the correspondent. Uh, and I don't know what else you want us to tell people about our characters, Jonathan. You don't. He didn't give me any guidance. No, I mean, I mean that's <laughs> I fine. need directions. I'm literally the intellectual in the party. <laughs> I mean, if, if that's all you really need to tell them is, like, <laughs> if you have anything about their personality that you think stands out, I mean, you can tell them about that. But, uh, I mean, otherwise. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, I will add that uh, Virgil is a bit over-eager and had grand ideas about his adventures at sea, which have not quite gone according to plan, so he has been trying to figure out about some of his life choices and uh, why he thought this was a good idea in the first place. So, so you are playing Stephen Crane. <laughs> <laughs> I am! <laughs> Shh! That was supposed to be! <laughs> um, Alright. Next up is Kayla McNabb. Alright. Uh... Thank you. I am Kayla McNabb. I'm head of uh, instructional content design for the University Libraries. I've also appeared here a couple times. Uh, you may have seen me most recently on uh, Roll Call last week. Um, and I use uh, she, her pronouns. And the character that I'll be playing this evening is Jesse Newton. Um, they use they, them pronouns. Uh, they are uh, the captain. Um, in their late 30s, uh, short sandy hair, strong jawline, a uh, bit short for a captain, um, and confident to a fault. Um, originally from coastal Virginia, now on a boat, um, been boating for 25 years. Set out first time five years old as the captain. Uh, Wait, what? The oldest of five. Yep. They okay. started early. Um, started in the Navy uh, masquerading as a man and became more open uh, as they gained esteem and prestige and now feels comfortable with these uh, inferiors uh, on this boat. All right, thank you. Uh, next we'll have Griffin. Hello, I'm Griffin Nock, uh, he, him pronouns. I'm a studio worker here at the recording studios, mostly MDSB, and I'll be playing Roscoe Highland, just like this oiler, burly guy, not very smart, but is there for a great time. Born on a boat, it's gonna die on a boat, states don't matter, um, they're just ports, that's about it. Nice. And uh, last but not least, Trevor Finney. Hello, my name is Trevor Finney, I'm a uh, Creative Services Coordinator at the Libraries. I do a lot of the graphic design work there. Um, he, him pronouns. I'll be playing Bernard, uh, just Bernard. Uh, I am the chef on board and um, I love ham sandwiches. Uh, think about pie a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, would sort of rather just be in a kitchen, but I'm happy to be cooking wherever we are um, and uh, ready to see how this goes. Excellent. So uh, many of you might have noticed that nobody talked about classes or any of that sort of stuff. So we are today going to be playing a um, simplified role-playing game. Um, it's based sort of loosely off of the Labyrinth RPG by River Horse Games. Um, there are other systems out there that are fairly similar, but that's the one I was most familiar with because I've run those games multiple times. Um, it is uh, mostly based on D6s. Um, it has an advantage-disadvantage system with a DC for your D6 rolls, uh, and it has a very pared-down 
characters sort of have a thing they're particularly good at, and they have a thing they're particularly not great at, um, and they can help each other, and those can grant them advantages. But for the most part, they'll be rolling some D6s uh, to decide their successes and failures. So, um, if everybody is ready to go, I think we'll just go ahead and dive right in. We good? Diving in. I just realized that, that pun. pun? That Someone pun? gave yes. me credit for that being a pun earlier, and I literally did not connect <laughs> in my head. And then I just said it, and I was like, dive right in, boats. Uh, you didn't tell me to prepare puns. I didn't. I, this is this is not nearly as a punny of a tale. <laughs> But, all right, um, so you are all sailors aboard the Maggie Marie, which is a U.S. military vessel that has been mo mo moving munitions around off the coast of Northeast United States. Um, during a uh, routine shift change, you all have all been sleeping in the quarters when you are awakened to a terrible explosion. The boat rocks heavily. Um, you all immediately feel the heat of fires burning. Um, a quick glance around this vessel tells you uh, it's very likely that one of the engines has exploded, causing a chain reaction among the munitions. Um, you realize um, pretty quickly that most of the people who are aboard the ship, which there wasn't a whole lot, it's not a particularly large merchant ship, it's designed to be um, not really merchant, but military ship, designed to be sort of sleek and fast uh, when and kind of go under the radar because you're mo mo moving munitions around. Um, but most of the rest of the crew is likely dead. Um, you do know there is a single um, small rowboat um, that the boat carries for su just such an emergency. Um, and you are now placed in the decision of what to do. Are you going to try to gather, do anything on the boat? Are you going to try to escape? What are your options? What are your, or I guess, what are your decisions? I immediately rescue my spices. <laughs> so you grab some spices? <laughs> All right, go ahead and give me a D6 roll. You have you have essentially no. braved, <laughs> you have braved the boat um, that is quickly sinking uh, to grab. I didn't realize there was a failure condition. <laughs> All right, here we go. Two. A two. You successfully are able to go and grab some spices um, from your, uh, the, the, I forget what they call it on the boat, um, culinary, something like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know boat terminology. Sorry. Galley? Galley? Sure. We'll do that. It's the yeah. Um, someone's going to have to help me with boat terms. Uh, <laughs> you are successfully able to grab your um, spices from um, the, the galley. You are able to emerge from the fire and the wreckage uh, and the water that is quickly pouring into boat the boat unharmed. Let's go. <laughs> what are the I sound the doing? alarm. Um, I want to wake anyone up who has managed to survive and sleep through this um, in the uh, predetermined method for an emergency. <laughs> so, so you <laughs> ring a bell. Um, yep. You realize pretty quickly <laughs> that the four of you were on your sleeping shift in the hold um, and are likely the only survivors because everybody else would have been uh, manning the engines or were likely above the engines on the deck uh, during this explosion. Uh, so Virgil, of course, not actually a sailor, is here uh, to learn and write and has dreams of, you know, the next big adventure story. Uh, so that involves being part of the crew and, you know, pretending to fit in among them despite, uh, you know, a bit of an education. So Virgil's first thought is grab the notebooks. Grab the notebook. All right. Don't want to lose it. Give me a d6 roll. <laughs> oh. It's going to roll loudly across my table. That's a one. I respect that That's decision. That's a one. Yeah. Uh, you run back for these notebooks, and, and as you do, there is a subsequent uh, explosion uh, in one of the cases of munitions, and you receive a, a sort of shot of shrapnel to your gut. 
Um, you have taken an injury. <laughs> um, do you continue? <laughs> um, yeah, if there's one thing Virgil is also not, it's when confronted with the reality, stubborn. So no. <laughs> so, so. Now I'm trying to find the fastest way off this ship. I can remember this story for later. <laughs> I can remember this story for later. Okay, so you are you are headed for the rowboat. Um, so y'all see Virgil go into the ship for a moment. There's a little explosion, um, and then Virgil goes running by you, uh, probably clutching <laughs> your gut. Uh, there's definitely some blood there. Um, and starts heading for the rowboat. Well-dressed Virgil is shaken. <laughs> Looks a little shaken. <laughs> Um, all right, so Virgil's heading to the rowboat. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, I think Roscoe slept through the initial explosion, hearing not so great, working around the machine so long. But hears the alarm and is thankfully woken up, grabs the tools that are like by his bed, always ready to go, and just tries to basically scoop up anyone who's having a hard time getting out, uh, heading to a rowboat. All right, so you probably actually help Virgil, because Virgil is bleeding. <laughs> uh, so... Also a wimp. <laughs> also a wimp. Um, so starts uh, leading Virgil out. Um, we still have two people on the boat. Uh, what are what are y'all doing? We still got. Um, I'm gonna make sure I get the names right. Jesse and Bernard. Bernard. Damn. I was usually so good with names. All right, <laughs> Jesse. Bernard. Bernard. Sorry. Uh, I intend to call him Cook. So <laughs> that's fair. That's all you've ever called me. You know, I uh, yeah. It's what I am. It's what I do. Um, am I still in the galley? Uh, no. So um, you would have. I grabbed my spices and ran back yeah. up. Um, but you can choose to go back down there if you <laughs> sort of been like, oh wait, but what about blank? Yeah. Well, I mean, it occurs to me that like bread would also be good. Mm-hmm if we're about to climb into a life raft and we don't know how long we're going to be there, I was worried about making it taste good, <laughs> but I mean like actually having food would probably be great. Okay. Um, so I'm going to, if I can, I'm going to chance it again. I'm going to run back down and get some, get some bread, some like literal bread um, or whatever else, what other rations we might have. And then I'm just going to run back and then dive into the boat or okay. climb in. Give me uh, a D six roll. Five. Nice. So you are able to go down through here. The water is, is starting to come up, but you, you quickly go to where you know you've placed a lot of the, the food and the rations. Um, and you are able to get um, five loaves of hardtack. So it's it's bread mm. that is intended to, to last. Um, and you, you quickly stuff those in your, your pockets wherever you can and, and dash out of there and start heading for the rowboat. So that leaves just Jesse. Uh. Yep. As uh, getting to the alarm bell, pulling on boots, grabbing the kind of satchel that has all the papers for the boat, and making my way to the rowboat. So you're grabbing a satchel? Mm hmm. Okay. Give me a D6 roll. Six. Six. You are able to. Um, duck down into the ship, you grab your satchel that has papers for the boat, um, and uh, run back out and uh, jump into the boat with the others, not jump literally, but climb into the boat. Um, and y'all watch as you um, the boat sort of pushes away from your larger ship, uh, and within minutes your ship has completely submerged itself. The fire sits on top of the water momentarily uh, and then is eventually extinguished. As you look out um, across the ocean, uh, you notice it is the middle of the night. There are um, some stars twinkling in the sky and it is a half moon. Um, so you've got a fair bit of light. Um, there is a lot of wreckage floating uh, within the water, um, pieces of wood. You notice um, in the distance what appears to be the corpse, probably of one of your fellow sailors. Um, but that is uh, the last of the Maggie Marie as it vanishes beneath these dark black waves. 
Um, as you look out, you are in a very small dinghy, essentially. Uh, you are out on the open ocean, uh, and you are very far from land. Um, so, the boat has sort of four tasks that need to be done to keep it upright. There are two positions for rowing. The boat is intended to be rowed by two people. One person could technically row the boat by themselves, but it would take twice the effort. Um, someone needs to bail water, because on the ocean, every time the water splashes, um, some of it gathers in the bottom of the boat, and if it's not bailed out, uh, then it will eventually succumb to the waves. Um, there is a small bucket that sits in the back of the boat for that task. Uh, and then if you intend to navigate or um, head in some specific direction, someone has to be the lookout slash navigator. Um, so y'all can think for a moment about what roles each of you would like to take. Um, you can switch the roles periodically. Um, you don't have to just choose one and continue doing it. But once you uh, start, you'll sort of take on a job for a while. and um, Y'all can y'all can let me know what you're gonna do. If there's anything you want to attempt to do while you're here, um, you can you can let me know. But we will we'll start figuring out how y'all get rescued. All right. I make my way to the front of the dinghy <laughs> for navigation. I don't even ask for per everyone. I just do it. Permission. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I know. You're the captain. From who? That is the captain. <laughs> and I'm starting to look through the bag for the most uh, recent map or direction, any sort of information about where we currently are. All right. What's everybody? I'll start bailing water. Start bailing water. Oh, no. Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. Uh, it's gonna bail some water. Oh sure, make the injured reporter row. <laughs> oh right, you were injured. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. This small boat is so much worse than that big boat we were on, and I'm just so ready to head somewhere else. Just tell me where to go. We're going. Oh no, Virgil definitely agrees. Virgil never got his sea legs, and this smaller boat is even worse than the big one. <laughs> so that is true. All One right. of the things y'all immediately realize about the small dinghy is it is precarious. Um, large shifts in weight, movement that is not particularly careful, can flip the boat or cause someone to spill out. Um, so you are in a very delicate situation with how you um, have to sort of operate on here. Um, the dinghy is really intended for maybe two, three people. Um, and y'all, so y'all have four. Um, of course, this was back before safety protocols, so nobody's putting proper amounts of boats on ships for making sure everybody can evacuate. But yeah, it is it is definitely worse, um, and the waves have a much more dramatic effect on um, the the sort of shaking. That's all. Um, Bernard, you had a question. I'm a very big person, uh, so I think I will actually sit down and then help row. Uh, so that I'm not like knocking this boat around. Okay. Also, because of the injury, I see the bleeding now. I mean, Virgil does have some rowing experience from his Ivy League days. It's not that he can't row. <laughs> oh. He does want to get the shrapnel out first, though. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that looks rough. I just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Someone should really help you with that. Happy to row <laughs> right next to you. All right, so we've got. A um, couple rowers, um, and uh, who's bailing again? Virgil? All right. I am. And um, yeah. we've got your captain doing lookout. Um, yes. Doing captain-y things. Doing captain -y things. So mm -hmm. um, you guys start rowing. The captain is giving you directions, um, and uh, the bailing uh, sort of continues as these waves um beat upon you. Uh, so go ahead, Captain, you're going to give me a perception check uh, to see if you can navigate. Uh, due to the fact that you start in nighttime, this is made um, normally with a hindrance, but as I recall, you're the Captain, so you have advantage mm -hmm. on perception checks, so you're going to roll right. that straight. Um, okay. And I also um, 
need a strength check from the two rowers to make sure that you can sort of manage this against the waves. Um, and uh, if you have advantage on that because you're particularly strong, ooh, one. We got a four, a one, and a five. All and right. Five. So there's there's a moment where Bernard uh, is is waves are sort of picking up on that side and the boat is is sort of swaying a little bit more than you might like, but um, the uh, the oiler um, Roscoe is able to sort of muscle y'all out of that danger uh, at the last second. Um, the uh, captain. Uh, is able to sort of peer out into this darkness uh, following the moon and the stars and, and sort of gives you all some directions to row into and in the direction that they think land may exist in. Um, and I you are rowing. Highland. Good work, Highland. Cook, come on. Get it together. <laughs> Yes, Captain. <laughs> I say yes, Captain, but I say it's so much better. <laughs> From behind you, you just hear, isn't it I I? <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. Got to do some stuff. On this side. Also, I'm guessing there was nothing in this boat. Like, no one stores anything useful. It was just an empty dinghy that yep. we... Mostly okay. empty. Just there checking. is a bucket for bailing <laughs> that y'all leave in there. Right. There's two oars, but there's not nothing else. Okay. Just um, just check in. We aren't missing out on something miraculous hidden under the bench. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's always good to check. There's like a whole meal. It's a turkey dinner. No. Um, uh, so you are you row this way until... A first aid kit. <laughs> first aid kit. Um, Anything. You, you row this way until morning. Um, so you've sort of been pressing on your, your wound there, Virgil, and you think the bleeding has mostly stopped. You definitely still have um, a, a cut that is is pretty significant wound, um, but you you aren't just like bleeding out over, over time. Uh, you are quite cold. In order to bail, you are sort of in this cold water. Um, oh, you no. uh, <laughs> notice that... Um, do, being off the, cor the the coast of the northeast United States, this is um, very cold water. Um, you actually see some um, chunks of ice periodically um, in, in terms of, they're not big and it's not like glacial, but um, it, is, it is quite cold. Um, and you do know that being in the water for a particularly long time would be very detrimental. Um, so you've been bailing and you're definitely getting cold, but y'all are able to row um, for about eight hours. You, you row into the morning. Um, when the morning light sort of um, peaks and you, you get a good sense of the ocean, it's um, you do notice um, off the um, sort of off in the distance a little bit um, a piece of wreckage. Uh, your initial thought would be this is this is wreckage from your ship that has sort of been drifting uh, along near you. Um, the thing that seems to stand out the most about this piece of wooden wreckage is there appears to be a sack lying on top of it. Is that sack familiar? Can I look at it? Um, you can look at it uh, if you want. Oh, you can all look at it. It's not. Um, it's morning time now, so it's and it's not that far away. Um, so it's not particularly difficult. Um, it appears to be a sack from the galley. Uh, the biggest concern is sometimes sailors take the old sacks and put other things in them, belongings and stuff like that, so there's no guarantee what's in it, um, but it does look to be an old sack. Seems like we should get it anyway, then. Could be useful. Yeah. I think we've got to get that sack. I don't know how we got to go about this, though. Okay. Um... How cold's the water? Water's pretty cold. It's very cold, says Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so you're all you're all wet. Like you're all splashed with the yeah. ocean waves, like the boat's being tossed. It has it has no real like solid stability. Most of the rowing is spent stabilizing the boat. Um, and keeping it like turned towards waves in a way that makes it not immediately just flip over. 
Um, you could row over to this and try to get it. Um, it's it's not that far away, and it's just sort of drifting, and you all have locomotion behind it. So, um, is that the is that the plan? I look to the captain. Uh, how much food were we actually able to get? Was it five loaves of bread? Six hardtack. Six hardtack. Um, yeah, I want to try to get this sack. Okay. Uh, so you row over towards this sack. Um, and so the sack is sitting on this piece of wood. Um, you could try to reach the row out, one of the oars, and um, sort of grab it on that. Um, or someone could try to jump in the water and get it. Um, uh, what are what are you going to to do? It was uh, no, it was five. It was five pieces of hard tack. It was five. I thought it was yeah. five. Okay. Um, I, ch I checked um, my die that I rolled to make sure. Well, I wasn't trying wasn't trying to sneak that sneak that by you. Um, uh, can we like um. I don't know, tie something to the bucket and like hook it. You you could um ha. Huh. Who has something to tie to the bucket? Um I grab my toolbox. Would it be reasonable to say if there's rope in there? There's or probably some, some twine. Of... Uh, twine, yeah. I was thinking like whatever the thin rope is. Okay. You're going to take some of the twine from your toolbox and tie it to the bucket um and and sort of toss it out there. So who is who is undertaking this action? If it's far, <laughs> I can throw <laughs> it and try to tug it back. It's not particularly far away. Um, it's just sort of a little awkward because the, the board is up against the boat right now. Every time a wave hits, it sort of claps into it, and you're, you're trying to get it out there and, and basically hook it with the, the boat and drag the mm. sack across the wood to yourself. Can I try to identify the best place to hit it with the bucket and then convey that? to Highland? Uh, yeah, you can do that. So this would constitute the helping action, so you're going to help Highland attempt to get this. So Highland, I need you to give me a dexterity check. Um, in All this, right. you are, so you're just rolling d6 um, for your roll. Sorry, Virgil, Virgil has secretly rescued the ship's cat. <laughs> yeah. you get, and since you're being helped, yeah. you actually get to roll two and take the higher. Oh, okay. The same two rolls as last time. I got a five. You got a five? Uh, well, yeah, luckily, the, the DC was five for this roll, so you are able to yes. pull it in without <laughs> tipping the boat or falling in yourself. Uh, you pull the sack over to yourselves. Um, you open it up. There is uh, a dingy white T-shirt and three potatoes in this sack. Oh, love potatoes. <laughs> A good get. Roscoe's very happy. <laughs> Excellent work, Highland. Yes, very good. I agree. I'm glad you appreciate it. <laughs> I, I love the fervor that your soldiers <laughs> report to you, Captain. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tough ship. To, tough leadership, you know? That's right. Tough but fair. That's All what right. they say about me. <laughs> so what are you doing now? Back on course. Back on course? All right. Are you switching roles? Are people staying in the same roles? What's going on? Uh, I can continue to row. That's good with me. Okay. My back's really starting to hurt, but I can I can row for a little while longer. I mean, I would prefer to be less wet if rowing makes me less wet for a while, but... Uh, <laughs> sitting on the... There's a bench in the center where the people who are rowing sit, uh, and it is up out of the water. <laughs> <sighs> All right. And I'm just, I'm just like, <laughs> grab the bucket. All right. So you all switch places. Um, since you aren't under any sort of time crunch, you can do this delicately, and it does require a certain amount of delicate movement to switch places. Great. I've been told I have, uh, I've been told I have poor balance. <laughs> uh, you do indeed. Uh, but this is, this is not the moment that it gets tested. 
because <laughs> uh, you have time to, to be very, very careful. Um, so uh, we are, we're switching roles. So it looks like um, Virgil is now rowing. Uh, so let me do this. Um, Bernard is bailing. And we got some scene work here. Yep, stuff happening. <laughs> Um, it's a, it's a life. <laughs> so, uh, Captain, go ahead and give me a uh, perception roll to make sure that you can keep everyone on track. Um, this this time you, you are not at disadvantage because it is daytime, so it's much more clear to, to sort of see and, and be able to, to navigate. Um, ooh, a four. Um, let me go. Uh, yep. Um, so you feel confident in your directions um, and your navigation. Uh, rowers, can you each give me a strength check? Um, so uh, uh, Roscoe, you'd make this with advantage. Um, uh, Virgil, you do. You actually, you're weak, right? Phys no, no, no. The captain's physically. Weak. I rolled well, two it's ones. poor constitution. Yeah. yeah, different thing. So you got what? A two ones. Two so ones. Better of those is a one. Um, yeah. So surprisingly. <laughs> Um, I was too hype about the potatoes. You, too, you got too I excited about focus. the potatoes. You are rowing, not paying attention. A big wave sort of catches you off guard. The boat sort of starts tipping. And it's actually the, the correspondent Virgil uh, with uh, his bloody uh, intestines like cut where his shrapnel here is like rowing. Uh, puts in some extra stress on those oars to, to push. Um, bleeds opens up the wound just a little bit but is able to keep you all from flipping over um and you stay on track um i told you virgil rode at harvard <laughs> good work there parker <laughs> uh, keep it together okay okay <laughs> yep. disappointed but that's all right <laughs> so there's a moment here that we'll take for y'all to, to sort of chat um, during your this next eight-hour shift if you want, if there's anything in particular y'all need to talk about. Um, otherwise, um, we will, I'll let you know what happens next. How far is land? Says the non-sailor, who has no idea how far out at sea we actually were. <laughs> Do I have a sense of of distance or of duration at normal speed? Um, I mean, so y'all weren't that far out. You don't generally go that far out because there's no real need to. Right. Uh, it does put you at a disadvantage if something like, say, your boat sinks. Um, then, you know, that's a problem. Um, you are not moving that fast, though, and, um, I mean a lot of your rowing and your effort is actually going towards just staying afloat more than movement. So that also is sort of a hindrance. So, I mean, it's hard to tell. A lot of it's going to depend on the, the seas, um, but it could take a day. It could take longer. Um, just sort of depends on a little bit of how lucky you get and, and how consistent your, your rowing and effort is um, to get to shore. You Roscoe just wants to say that Roscoe is sorry. <laughs> Roscoe woke up every morning, oiled his fists, and punched the machinery. Thought it, Roscoe was doing a good job, but then the ship exploded. And I think I'm a little responsible, but... <sighs> I'm rowing. Keep it in. Keep it in. Pull it together, Highland. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. There's no reason to cast blame now. Our vessel is gone, and we will continue in high spirits. They're very fervent. <laughs> <laughs> Mandatory. That's fun. an order. Um, <laughs> yes. Make that an order. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, it could be days, Parker, to answer your question. And we should be <laughs> mindful of that 
with our limited resources. Uh, Cook, you grabbed some food, I understand. And we have these three potatoes. And spices. And spices. I do believe we will have to cook the potatoes, though. Apologies, Captain. Hmm. That will complicate <laughs> things, but we might be able to figure that out. Um, we will need to ration this food. The rowers will need more food, I would argue. On your rotation, we can figure out what that should be. All right. So, and for the record, you can't eat potatoes raw, especially in an emergency situation. It's not Nothing is too hard. It's not as good, but you're not really in it for the <laughs> uh, the taste at this moment. You're in it for the hey, can I survive this? <laughs> do we have a lighter? You do not. No one grabbed a lighter. Okay. <laughs> there are matches in this <laughs> toolbox. Um, it's Roscoe's chance to redeem himself. <laughs> matches in the toolbox? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll do a roll for that. Let's see if yeah, there's, see if there's one say. in there. Um, That's more of a chance thing. I don't know why they would be Yeah. There. I mean, you might. Maybe you were stoking a fire yeah. or something. I had some that you threw in there, so... I'm going to give you a mm -hmm. 33. Oh, okay. Yeah, there are some matches in the fire, in the box. Excellent. Yeah, yes. Yeah, a 33% say, chance. Uh, and the late 1800s, uh, everyone smokes also. So. <laughs> <laughs> no one understands the arms of smoking. Yeah. Uh, so um, we could. But it looks so cool. <laughs> we could potentially figure out a way to do some cooking, maybe. Um, all right, so you're pondering how to cook on this tiny boat. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, as and the, go ahead. I just feel revitalized knowing that we'll have a warm meal. It just just brings a lot of my whole life has been based around the bowl. You know what I mean? So I'm really excited to have a nice warm potato. Possible on the future. It'll get we'll get through anything. Anything here. Fam. Oh. Malie. <laughs> You're like my family. I'm really excited about this 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 turn of events. Uh, That's it. So uh <laughs> y'all continue rowing through the day and um the ocean begins to swell. Um you notice that oh. it's getting particularly choppy. Um I'm going to need a uh strength check from the rowers and I'm going to need a stamina check from the bailer. So if you have listed on your sheet that you are particularly have particularly good stamina, then you would have advantage of that. Otherwise, it would be a normal roll, unless it says you have poor stamina, in which case it would be disadvantage. I Rusko. think I have good stamina. Rusko has redeemed himself. Rusko got a six. Ooh. Oh, Virgil also got a Ooh. six. So y'all are y'all are able to power through this storm swell as it comes up. <laughs> wow, three Ooh. sixes oh. uh, on these rolls. Um, oh, I wish we had butter. Does <laughs> the warm potatoes made all of us really happy. <laughs> Just the thought of Just them, the thought. not even. <laughs> Who, did you say you wish we had butter? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for the potatoes. Because we're on a roll. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that I could but my spices. reward my team. You know. So you can reward your team. Yeah, uh, yeah but you were, you were able to power through this, this storm swell, um, and you have have rowed on into the afternoon. It's getting on into the, the mid to late afternoon. Um, it has been about 16 hours since you set out. Um, what is everybody doing? Uh, are you staying in your given tasks? Are you doing something else? Are you switching it up? Do we as long as I'm not navigating, <laughs> I'm happy. Do we see any, um, any, I would say landmarks, but it's not really landmarks. Sea marks? You any do not. land? <laughs> any, anything? No. Question yeah. mark? Um, no. Um, we're going to need to rest 
and also to eat some of this food soon. Um, so I'm pondering that. Um, we can start with some of the hard tack and distribute. Is it s is it five portions or is it five like blocks? Five portions. Okay. Um, and what would that be? Would that be like a day or a meal normally? Uh, I mean, that would that would be a meal. Okay. I mean, human beings can go a long time without food, but it does. Right. You do get weaker mm -hmm. over time. Right. Also, if you're physically exerting yourself, mm -hmm. you need it to power your muscles and whatnot. Um, all true. Yeah. Look at all that science, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Virgil's just nodding along, like obviously. Yes. <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> um. Mhm. Mm uh. Okay. Have we been close to any of that ice? Um. Any of those ice chunks? You not really. Um, okay. What's your? They are. It is. I salt want. Water. I want fresh water. Okay. So, ice is going to be our best bet probably at this point, yeah. since we don't have a water purifier. <laughs> there are no palm fronds here. Wait, can we roll and see if Roscoe has an air purifier, water purifier in the toolbox? Uh, we cannot roll to see. Wow, he would really pull through. <laughs> <for> Roscoe to <laughs> have a, a, a water purifier. Asking? No. Right. I, I mean, don't understand sailors. Water might have so been a good thing to grab when you're getting if off we the boat. Water? Well, we're surrounded by water. I don't get it. Yeah. What's the problem? If we have a, a no, sack that, that we could tie on uh, some twine, since we do, we've established we have twine, and now we have a sack. If I could, or someone could, if we see chunks of ice, I would want to try to gather. Okay. Some. I will. S I will say it does look, given how the ocean has swelled, as though there is uh, rain coming. Yeah, Ooh. that's concerning. Um, that's what you s spy with water. your navigator eyes. Yeah. So if we could collect some, we can drink it. But also, it'll try to fill the boat. Um, I'm trying to imagine what else would be in a toolbox. Roscoe could empty the toolbox and just hold it up, so that way the pail can still be used. That's true. Oh. I'm going to try to bail with the toolbox. No, try no, to... No, bail with the bail. Yeah. Fill water. Bucket. Yeah. So your toolbox well, probably isn't bucket. water uh, tight, um, like the bucket would be. Yeah. But mm. bailing doesn't require Wait. things to necessarily be watertight. It's just slightly less efficient. Do we line the toolbox with the sack? So the sack <laughs> yeah. is more like a burlap sack? Yeah. But it might help slow might. Mm -hmm. things escaping also from a, the toolbox. There's also a white t-shirt. It would have small... There you yeah. go. So, okay. So we could line the toolbox with the shirt. At least for the immediate future with the intention of getting rainwater that we'll be able to drink because water is the most important thing. Uh, <laughs> I say, Parker, write that down. I'm going to make an intelligence check because <laughs> I have a thought that Roscoe probably wouldn't have. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, when you say that, Virgil looks very confused as if where am I supposed to write this? You'll and do it later. And then get sad again at the, at the thought of lost notebooks. You have definitely heard Virgil talking to himself at various points where he is like writing a version of the story and then stopping and writing a better version of the story. Awesome. <laughs> does uh trying to remember. Does Roscoe have an idea? Alright, it's a four and I was thinking that a five would be the idea, so I'm gonna say no. Okay. No idea from Roscoe. No idea, no idea from there Roscoe. There was a glimmer and then it was gone. <laughs> Wait, you could use the cloth to <sighs> where? No. <laughs> I don't remember. Let's keep rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Not actually, but... Alright, so are y'all keeping the same tasks, or are you switching it up? Can 
guess we're staying put. It seemed to go pretty well. Yeah. Unless somebody wants to. So we established that we could have one person doing the rowing so that if we want to rotate for someone to rest, that would be the task that it would be most possible to ease up on or to reallocate people from. Right. I mean, the person who is in charge of navigating could also be the one who rests. Yeah. I don't know how much progress you would make if that was the case, but uh, the someone needs to bail unless you want to yeah. sink. Right. Yeah. And yeah. some at least one person needs to row less you got a greater chance of getting uh, flipped. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Or just or just flipped yeah, from the waves. Sort of you're yeah, yeah, somebody's got to balance. But if we aren't looking to make progress, that's, if it's more about just staying stable, that's feasible. So? So we'll how soon it. do I, with my 25 plus years of boating experience, <laughs> feel like the boating is, <laughs> boating is, is coming. <laughs> uh, it's, it's starting immediately. <laughs> as soon okay. as this, set, this ship starts. <laughs> Do you feel it in your bones? Nope, I you feel it see, on my skin. You can <laughs> see the here. cloud. It's dumping water out. And it's headed right for you. Okay. Um, well, we need all hands on deck, I guess. Dingy? Dingy. <laughs> uh, for now, Small and then deck. We'll, we'll rest when we get a break in the storm. Uh, for a moment, you hear Virgil mm-hmm. go, "All hands on dinghy." That's a good title for the book. <laughs> and then he shakes his head. It's like, never mind. <laughs> That's a terrible title for the book. <laughs> hmm. That's a terrible title for the book. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So you are keeping. For a moment, the environment was getting to him, and then he realized. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. That's, no. That's a very bad title. <laughs> uh, so y'all um, stay in your same uh, positions. So um, start rowing and uh, keeping your uh, boat bailed out. And also attempting yeah. to collect water somehow. Um, <laughs> I'm going to need... Uh, so the, the rain does start pouring down. Uh, it's pretty heavy rain. It is not a rain that's accompanied by heavy winds. Um, the The ocean has swelled a little bit, but um, it really isn't like a thunderstorm or anything along those lines. It's just a it's just a pretty heavy downpour. Um, I do need the baler uh, to give me a uh, stamina check. You have an increased amount of water coming into the boat uh, that you're having to deal with. <laughs> Bernard's got this. Let's get that get that right. <laughs> oh ho ho ho. And I do for just for clarity and for those at home, all of us. Um I do have advantage on this, yeah, right? Because you're you're the one who has improved stamina. Oof. Oh. <laughs> <'Cause>. <laughs> <laughs> so uh you got a six uh, out of your six and your one, so that's uh that's a good roll. You were able to keep up with this increased water flow. Um and as I recall, you're... Pl- I was just, like, fighting off some demons inside, just, like, pushing that down deep. Not today! Not today! Thinking about the spices, spice potatoes. Yeah. <laughs> when we get through all this. <laughs> yes. I'll deal with all that later. <laughs> Think about pie. Think about ham sandwiches. Um, That's like your little bailing rhythm is just, like, a list of foods. <laughs> uh, Chanting to yourself. Mm-hmm. So, Good focus, uh, cook. It's like a silent lit prayer. Mm-hmm. So you, uh, as I recall, y'all had decided to use the the toolbox to bail and use the the actual bucket for catching rainwater. Was that the uh, mm-hmm. the plan? Um, so you. So were we then lining the bucket with we whatever we were going to catch water in should be lined with something. Virgil is explaining in fancy terms uh, with his education. Anything we're going to catch water in, we should line to try and have less of it escape well so the bucket is watertight the Mm -hmm. toolbox is not right so you're just you're saying for it to like slosh around well i think i thought we were going to catch it in the toolbox with the shirt lined with something that's what i was trying to clarify i was like yeah i uh, i'm i'm the one bailing i think that toolbox would be real heavy so you're just gonna line the toolbox with the shirt were you gonna say something though Roscoe? Oh, I just thought it was the other way. That was it. (laughs) 
I was confused. That's why I was trying to clarify. That's why I asked. Yeah. I want to make sure. So, toolbox lined with shirt is how you're collecting water, and the baler is using the the bucket. All right. Um, the you are able to collect some water um, because the toolbox is not um, watertight. Uh, it will deplenish fairly quickly um, unless you try to consume it. You know. Um, at a, at a rather fast pace. Um, are you drinking it now? Are you trying to save it for later? What is your What is your strategy? You mean if I would assume we're trying to drink some now yeah. because we've gone without water for a yeah. while. If it's actively um, raining, the then we'll go ahead and drink it. Um, depending on how rapidly it is leaking out, uh, I would advocate for changing midstream to the bucket if it seems like we just won't be able to keep it in here even with the the shirt to make it less leaky okay roscoe seconds of course captain you're so smart captain <laughs> uh <laughs> excellent so uh the water is escaping there are um <laughs> there is sort of a hole on one side of it so you have to sort of tip the, the toolbox a whole big it's not a big hole and it would be fine for if you had tools in there but it's big enough that water is going to escape through it fairly quickly so you got to sort of keep it tipped to one side and when the the t-shirt down there uh, and even still it's it's sort of leaking um, you may be able to if you turned it and held it just right you might be able to get one more use out of it but um, you don't think that you're able to all drink you know your your fill and, and get hydrated now, but uh, you don't think it's probably going to hold more than another uh, one serving of water, essentially. Um, with okay. a all right, uh, how how heavy is the toolbox uh, relative to the bucket? It's fairly heavy. It's a it's a solid wood toolbox. Um, it is, in terms of material, definitely heavier to, and it's a little bit more awkward. Um, Bailing is mostly just sort of like a short movement, though, um, and the water is actually the heaviest part of that uh, equation, so um, it might strain you a little bit more than the bucket, but not an extraordinary amount. <sighs> All right. <laughs> oh, the sleeves are getting rolled up. Yep. Give, me the, give me the damn toolbox. <laughs> so you switch off. Um, uh, and try to start using the toolbox for your um, your uh, bailing and instead mm -hmm. uh, are now holding on to water in the bucket. So um, yeah, Jesse is mostly just thinking we should have replaced Highland's toolbox. <laughs> if only I had known. Also, is someone keeping an eye on this bucket so it does not tip over? Maybe st the captain? Mm hmm. Yeah. Just to make sure nobody kicks it, flips it over. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um, as you uh, are uh, sort of sailing along, you know, have a bucket, it's mostly full of water. Uh, the longer it's on the boat and the more it jostles around, you, you lose a little bit at a time. So over time, the amount you have in there will slowly de uh, deplenish to at least a certain minimum value but um, it definitely holds more and is more watertight than the uh, 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 toolbox was yeah. um, I would keep <laughs> trying to remind people to drink water while it's still raining as we can constantly mm -hmm. hydrating maximize our rain time <laughs> get mouth all your water bucket. now <laughs> All right, so um, you row through Just into sleep. the night. Um, it has it has gotten dark once again. Um, so let me do these things. No. Uh oh, oh wait. <laughs> things are happening. Yep. And you are now here. Uh, as you get closer into the night, the rain stops. Um, the seas seem to calm a little bit. They're still, I mean, you're still out on the open ocean, so the waves are still pretty high. 
um, and still turning the boat, but the, the swell has gone down, um, at least for now. Um, it is uh, approaching midnight. Uh, it has been about 24 hours since your boat sank. Um, <laughs> uh, Roscoe, uh, in the middle of the night as you are rowing, a seagull lands on top of your head. I'm going to need you Steady. to make a dexterity check. It's very still. <laughs> to see <laughs> if your reaction to it happening and <laughs> subsequently, I assume, trying to get rid of it uh, in some capacity, how We're that not. process oh. goes. No, Roscoe, yes. Roscoe was thinking Roscoe loves animals at first and then <gasps> Roscoe's hungry and then grabs up. <laughs> but <laughs> got a five. Got a five. Um mm. A five. Uh, you are able to grab at this bird. Um, I didn't expect you to try to grab it, so give me a... Um, <laughs> the dexterity check was to see if you tip the boat. Um, give me a strength check, I'm going to say, to try to yes. like hold on to this bird, if that's your if that's this, your goal. This could still be bad. Though. If that's your it's my goal. Boo, I'm going to boo myself on that one. That's a five, and that's a five. <laughs> so just fives all around. The fives all around. So you're able to uh, grab this bird. You get it right by the leg as it's trying to, to fly off. Um, it is uh, it is flapping. You, you're you able to sort of hold the dexterity of like keeping the boat from tipping. Um, what action are you taking? Because it is a lot of ruckus, and this boat is pretty precarious. Oh. Roscoe feels so bad, <laughs> but um, <laughs> knows that necks are fragile <laughs> and is just getting it ready for those potatoes and that bread. A seagull sandwich, but that's... Gonna just... Yep, yeah, that's, snap that's it. it. Dispatching the bird. Just just go and... F yes. You are, you are readily, <laughs> readily able to snap this bird's neck uh, with a with quick move uh, and your impressive strength, uh, and y'all now have the corpse of a seagull that chose poorly uh, <laughs> in, in place Rocket to live. throws it to the side and says, I can't look at it, I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> you did what had to be done, oh, son. No. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Never had parents, that means a lot. <laughs> All right, y'all have... Virgil's just sitting there like, well, if only I could get some ink and paper, I'd be <laughs> I got plenty of feathers. Yep start writing this down <laughs> <laughs> all right so y'all now have uh the corpse of a bird uh it is mm -hmm. it is late into the night um what are y'all doing i would say at this point it's been 24 hours since you were awoken by the um the chaos of your the explosion on your boat uh and its immediate demise <laughs> um what are you what are you up to So are the seas calmer than yeah. they were, or is it still they're, pretty rough? They're sort of pre-rain. Okay. Um, then I think one of you should rest. Roscoe has had a lot go on emotionally <laughs> and would like to rest. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe needs a nap. Power nap. All right. Yeah. So nonetheless. Roscoe comes up to the front of the boat and and curls up for a nap. Uh, what tasks are people taking on? Um, I guess I'll continue bailing because um, you're still you still need to be dry. How's your wound doing? It's a good question. Oh, it still hurts. And, uh, yeah, but I mean, like, I wasn't. I the seemingly the chances of immediately bleeding to death at twenty four hours have passed. You're not, so. you're not bleeding to death, but um, <laughs> I mean, it's still an open wound. It's still having an oh, yeah. effect on uh, numbers that you don't see. <laughs> but Virgil has now taken the tactic of trying to be the hero in his own future novel, so he is not drawing attention to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For now, he's like, got this. <laughs> <laughs> Stoic. I respect that. Um, well, do you do you want to switch 
um, to do bailing or do you want to keep on rowing? Because I think because we, we need both still, right? Yes. Like the water is still coming in and okay. Before so I sleep, the... should we use the, the t-shirt and twine to try to close up that wound? Eh, Do, I mean, the bleeding stopped. <laughs> Fair point. Ross Let's save sleep. that for the roast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the cook is like, "That's I'm going to use that as cheesecloth later when I start making this yeah, meal." You don't want wounds in that. <laughs> Would additional pressure be helpful? Since we do have some like sack and. Uh, like clo- other Might clothing and less. things. <laughs> yeah. Apparently something t- scary is happening behind the scenes. <laughs> so. Don't look behind the curtain. There's nothing going on back here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I would support attempting to cover it in some way, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I will help with that if that is useful. All right. So what are you using and who's doing it? And yeah, we'll go from there. Um, what do we have? We've got the burlap. Got it. And then we got yeah, you know, the burlap sack. We're not using and a satchel <laughs> and a bunch of paper. And no, not the paper. <laughs> I might need that later to write stuff on. Yeah, it has <laughs> when all I figure out how to make ink from this bird. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow extract ink. Um, yeah, and then we have this. T-shirt. Virgil is extremely educated. He can figure out how to make ink. Sure. <laughs> um, this account. Don't be so precious with the resources. This account I, will be written in when your life is on the line. Gold blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terrible. Um, I'm gonna tear the lining out of my coat. Ooh. Mm, interesting. Okay. You uh, uh, are gonna like the like lower part of this coat. When I try to get like a a swatch, is it floppy? yeah, that is gonna yes. that is gonna leave your coat uh, so cool, Captain. less <laughs> able to protect you from the elements. Sure. Okay. I'm not taking all of the lining, but I'm taking yep. one of the flappy pieces. The most important flappy piece. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yep. The no, the least. No. You take so the least un- yeah. important flap. Yeah. Enough that it could go around uh, his midsection. Okay. So. Uh, and who is actually uh, attempting to bandage this wound? I, I don't know if. It, can I? Yeah. I was gonna say, can you, I attempt, can to, attempt do to do it to myself? Because Virgil very much believes has every amount of faith in his book smarts. All right. Uh, and is like. I've read about this kind of stuff. I know how to do this. I can definitely <laughs> bandage my own wounds. All right. Um, exactly. I'm going to need you to give me a dexterity check to see if you uh, okay. lash out in pain as you <laughs> are attempting to do this to yourself and uh, shake uh, the boat. Oh, nice. Man, y'all are... Nice. So those of you who play D&D with me on a regular basis know this is never how I roll, so I'm apparently using all my points for this game. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's knock, important. Knocked Knocked it out of the park with another six. Uh, you are able to, you sort of uh, steal yourself as you've you read about in multiple books and maybe bite down on a leather belt or something and, and cinch this thing around your waist. That's definitely how they do it in the stories. Yeah. And if anything, I need to do it the right way so that when I write about it later, everybody knows I did it the right way. Uh, <laughs> So you make sure they all see you doing this. And you're able to pull this tight. It hurts a lot. You grit your teeth, but you're able to do it uh, in a fairly steady manner that doesn't rock the boat too much and put everybody in danger of being tipped out. Um, So your your bandage is, your wound is definitely hurting less now. um, And it's got a decent amount of pressure, which you know is good. Uh, You can still feel that shrapnel in there. You know this is, is not dressed for any sort of um, you know, proper disinfecting and bandaging, but it has to do for now. Salt water still stings. Well, nobody rescued any alcohol, so. <laughs> um, yeah, nobody rescued any alcohol. Uh, for just pouring on there. I mean, it's a lot of salt water. Salt's pretty uh, 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 
anti antiseptic <laughs> antiseptic yeah yeah towards not completely but somewhat mm -hmm. um so yeah so we've got does that mean you're now rowing or you're bailing virgil uh bernard did you want to change it up is that what you were i'm i'm good to keep bailing i just wanted to whatever was easier for you okay okay uh i guess we'll stay put then okay um, Captain, are you continuing to be the lookout or are you going to assist in rowing the boat? Um, can I... Yeah, no, I'm just going to continue to be the lookout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that me poorly assisting at rowing the boat is going to be very helpful. Um, All right. Any better than Virgil trying to do it alone? Right. <laughs> All right, uh, so yeah, maybe. Um, Captain, give me a perception check. Uh, and is it a straight uh, roll because it's night, or is it still an advantage? Uh, it's a straight roll because it's night now. Um, and uh, Virgil, go ahead and give me yeah. a roll for controlling this boat. Okay. Five. Got a five. Moving down from the six, uh, but I'll still take that. I really, thought, I really thought with oh. only one person rowing that it was going to be a much greater chance of failure, but look at that. You don't know how bad Virgil wants to be a hero of his own story I mean, now. I guess not. I guess uh, you're really knocking out of the park with those rolls. Um, all right. So we'll do Can't write the story if I don't make it home. Having a very bad dream. <laughs> Roscoe is? About yeah. the seagull? I got a two mm -hmm. on my sleep check, so... <laughs> is he like then, then. <laughs> sleep alright uh, so you have uh, rode through the night um, and into morning uh, as the morning sunlight sort of hits the water you see in the distance uh, captain as you've been keeping look out um you think at first it's a little shimmering on top of the water. Mm -hmm. um, maybe the sunlight, the new sort of um, morning sunrise has you know, hit the water in just the right way. And then as you, as you keep going, you realize um, that this is a school of bait fish. Ooh. They've come up to the surface of the water. Yeah. Yep. Wait, I want some of those. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I will, uh, gently wake up, uh, Highland. Mm -hmm. It gently does not work, unfortunately. <laughs> Didn't he sleep through the explosion? <laughs> he did. Um, give him, uh, kind of a gentle nudge at first, and then kind of like a, like a swift kick. Oh, oh, oh. Morning! Oh. <laughs> Captain, yes, Captain! Sorry, I was not there for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we need a net. Hmm. We have a sack. It could work. There are fish over there. The sack is a very small net. This is true. Uh, Roscoe has no ideas. What about that old T-shirt we found? Can you like can we rip some holes in it? Well, how big I'm is sure the sack? I'm sure I could post some holes. I don't know how big the sack is. How big is it? Uh, but don't we need the sack to like not have holes? Yeah. Well, but it's, but it's like a burlap, burlap sack. sack. So it's permeable. Uh, I mean, it's the size of a potato sack. Or is the sack? sack? Wait. So. Yeah, it's got a narrow, a fairly narrow Virgil? opening, about like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Was the sack what was on Virgil? Actually, I forgot. No, that's coat lining from the oh, captain. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we did not use precious resources. Um, <laughs> does anyone know how to craft a net out of twine? I could not. I could try, but I could not. Not before the fish get away. Yeah, okay, that's a good point. I could punch the fish so hard that all of them surface. Mm -mm. No, I, don't, I mean we no. could. I think that's how that works. We <laughs> need to be very fish. careful with the um, with the bucket, but we could use the bucket. 
tie it to something so we don't lose yeah. it. And give but us also, scoop. if we lose it, big trouble. So the bucket is currently right now, filled with your water. Right, right now it's filled with our drinking water. So Can we use the toolbox long enough to, um, like, not, like, bailing is important, but it would be great to get a fish. Yeah. So could we use the toolbox while... Yeah. Is it light? Since fish it isn't watertight. Fail? Fit. Right. Yeah. Fail. But it doesn't, doesn't need to be watertight to catch fish. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like specifically not watertight is what we want, right? Because mm-hmm. you right. want to like, the, yeah. catch fish, not water. Got it. Yeah. Are these fish the fish? size of tools? They are, they're bait fish, so yeah, like that. So they could get through this that's hole or no. pull up? No, that's like We're the size of a tool. Okay. They're not going to fall I don't out. I how big this hole is. <laughs> This is theater the of hole the mind. Is the, I mean, the hole is only like, like that, okay. which is a lot. If for a tool water. wouldn't fall right, out, which then is a, a lot fish for won't. water, but yep. not a lot for tools and or bait fish. Perfect. Let's get some. Uh, so some I fish. will say the toolbox is a little awkward for this purpose because it has a lid, um, mm-hmm. and uh, that sort of round rectangular structure. But does it? I thought it had just it was just like a wood toolbox. Yeah. Yeah, with a little That's lid. It's got a lid. Okay. Um, I mean, you could. How deep is the lid? Uh, the lid is like a scooped out, like uh, half circle. So it's like a lunch, like a big lunch box, mm. but it's made. You could of think lid. of it that way. Sure. Okay. Gotcha. Hmm. I mean, you could take the lid off. You yeah, I, I. I was gonna say, do we need this in in a complete piece anymore, or should we oh, salvage well, it if for we can, parts? Yeah. If we can take the lid off without having to like sit here and like pry it apart before the fish get away. I mean, are, Didn't Roscoe well, yeah. have I was gonna say there's a bunch of tools lying down. at the bottom of your yeah, boat. There's a bunch of tools at the out. bottom of the boat. <laughs> the tools are already out. Yeah. 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 The cool. The Let's get rid of the lid. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have well and I don't think I would have been shoveling water, bailing water out with like the lid flapping every time I go Smashing down with it your either. fingers. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <grah. laughs> every time Roscoe. I imagined it like a wooden like six pack container. Yes, that's me. But yeah, I also did. Um, so <laughs> you you quickly uh, use a tool to undo a couple of screws and, and take the lid off, um, or you've already done that before now, and tying it to some twine. Save those screws; they might be useful. I don't know. We're gonna try to catch some fish. <laughs> Save everything. Who mm-hmm. is who is making this attempt at catching fish? Sure. Um. Captain, can you do it while you <laughs> look around <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> I can try. <laughs> no disrespect, Captain. Is that Bernard's like secret, yeah, like subtle way of being like, uh, sure thing, Cookie. <laughs> All right. And the whole time, Roscoe's like, Captain is so cool. Captain can do anything. Watch this. Seven fish, easy. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, we don't we don't have any enlisted, so that, so nobody's better at Dex nobody than anything designate else. to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if you're tossing this out here, I need you to give me a dex roll uh, to see if you can catch some fish. All right. Mm, I got a three. All right. Uh, I was trying f- to give the emotional help action, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the emotional help support, in the this world support. does nothing. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> This yeah, is a no. Stephen Crane uh, not a <laughs> book. There is no such thing as emotional value. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, that's pretty fair. That is pretty fair. Um, you know, you fall in the in the water. Um, mm. uh, right as you're tossing oh, it jumps. overboard, you yeah, right go out. a little <laughs> bit too far and fall over into the water. Okay. I'm does immediately it, jumping, no thought. Does it make it to uh, the fish, what? though? Uh, it does. Okay. I'm holding on to the twine. Okay. And it sounds like uh, we've got the the oiler Roscoe's also dove in. Yeah. No hesitation at all. All right. Um, there's a whole thing for this. So, um, <laughs> uh, Roscoe, were you still on nap time or were you back to helping to row at that point? I have Because that would depend. My action, next actions might depend on that. Uh, I was just woken up. Yeah. Okay, so, so never mind. I was woken okay. up, and my captain fell overboard. I wanted to make sure <laughs> I didn't have to j- jive for, like, an oar that you were taking with you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, Luckily, we I hadn't gotten that about that. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> so you're all sailors, so you can all swim, 
Are you mm -hmm. sailors mm -hmm. or sailor adjacent in the case of uh, Virgil? Um, mm -hmm. So you can For all swim. Years. Rich people who spend time at the beach. Right. Or just people <laughs> who spend time at the beach, love to lounge. Um, so you can attempt to get back in the boat. Mm -hmm. um, and now that Roscoe has dove in after you, uh, Roscoe will also need to attempt to get back in the boat. Okay. Um, so that is a that is a dex check to climb in without tossing the boat. Can I help? Like, pull wow, that's in? The, the assumption also is someone's very helping. interested in trying oh, to okay. help keep the boat balanced while that happens. Yeah, that's a great because that's a lot of weight in one place. Yep. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh, so my diving didn't help the captain at all. <laughs> this is so unfortunate. I, I love that you did it, but <laughs> the captain can <laughs> swim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dedication. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm trying to pull it. the the toolbox closer to me and like tread water before. So you're trying to the... you're trying to catch fish while treading water in the ocean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Roscoe's like pulling the captain back towards. <laughs> All right. So, so it did help. So I Roscoe's mean, is, helping If there's someone you. at the edge that I can hand the the twine to, I'll take it. Give it then to. Then I'll me. I'll hand them the twine and let them sure. reel it in. But that makes sense. I'm not <laughs> losing this toolbox. All right. So you hand the twine off to the cook. Yep. Instead of trying to catch fish yourself uh, while treading sure. water. Got it. Um, all right. Uh, you are able to pull it in. Um, you are able to catch two bait fish uh, in your, your toolbox. Uh, right. I'm going to need those checks to get back in the boat. Okay. All right. That's a three. A three. Uh, you are. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'll tell. I'll tell you once the. Okay. Oh. A two. Uh, so, <laughs> with your three, you're able to get back in the boat. Uh, with your two, you are are climbing up, and uh, are not able to. I need the three people who are now in the boat to give me a dexterity check. <sighs> okay. It's another three. Got a five. Three. We're sticking with three, five, <laughs> and a two. two. All right. So, thanks to Virgil's diligence in quickly shifting the weight of the boat at the last second, it does not tip over completely He's in those into brains. the water. Um, so that is that is good work. Uh, but you have not gotten into the boat yet. Okay. Um, did we catch any fish? Two. two. Apparently two. So now it's basically a fish stew. I mean... You got potatoes. You got, you got potatoes. gold meat. You got spices. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got bread. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So I need to try again with a dex check. Yep. Right. Okay. All the while I'm still like pulling and tugging. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's basically I a requirement. I was not thinking about counterbalance. Yeah, that's yeah. basically <laughs> a requirement for somebody to get back in the boat. Is like the rest of the boat mm. has to do a lot of things to accommodate that. Yeah. Five. Five. Uh, so you were able to, with a wow, little nice. bit of help and a little bit of balance uh, from your your crewmates, um, to climb back into the boat. Um, you definitely feel more tired from the experience. Um, you are mm -hmm. cold and wet now. Uh, you are cold and wet as well, uh, Roscoe. Um, <laughs> the water has, has sort of sent an icy chill um, through your body. Um, but you are all now back in the boat, and you have to uh, bait fish for the uh, the trouble. Yes, Captain, yes. It's basically seven fish. And you got first try. No problem. She's so cool. I can't Two. believe this. <laughs> basically seven fish. Virgil's not sure if Roscoe just can't do math or is just super, super supportive of the captain. No, it's, it's seven. Both. See, one, s seven. That's yeah, how it goes. It's This one. Okay. Got it. We. That's how it goes. It's a result, and we will make the most of it. <laughs> I'm like, Aye, Captain. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so um, let's see 
so y'all are uh, continuing to row, um, and we will make it to the next one. Uh, so you row into the afternoon of the next day. Um, let's see. Who bumped all your scores? Let's see. Right, we'll get to the next day, and y'all tell me what you want to do. Um, all right. Let's see. We are in the afternoon of the next day. Um, oh yeah. Uh, everybody who hasn't else slept. Someone needs so to rest. Yeah. Everybody but Roscoe, yeah. uh, you find yourselves tired. Um, mm -hmm. Why are you guys so sleepy? This is great. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> My vote for next in the rotation was Cook. Thank you, Captain. All right. Apparently, the outsider is just gonna keep on working. <laughs> keep on working. All right. Yep. So let me know. Wow. Let me know what tasks you're you doing. Up. I know who's be next. expendable. <laughs> let me know what tasks you're doing for this day. I'm happy to roll on my own. Rowing on your own. Right. Well, yeah, because I'm gonna. I'm assuming I'm gonna have to bail since. Yeah. Virgil slowly begun to notice that the captain, while good at giving orders, apparently doesn't do any work. <laughs> That's going in the book. <laughs> uh, I do want to use my uh, pocket knife to clean these fish and this gull. Okay. Ooh, pocket knife. Pull that out. Um, start uh, dressing some fish and a gull uh, as you go. Um you go ahead and give me an intelligence check for that. Okay. So the cook is going to sleep. Mm. I rolled a one. Probably should have let somebody who's, you know, smart do that, but whatever. <laughs> Virgil's getting a little uh, saucy. That's fair. <laughs> Quietly to himself in the back of the boat. <laughs> Been a while since we slept. I mean, I wanted to have the cook do it as... It is what he's trained in, but he needs a nap. So, so what'd you roll on your your dressing? One. It's a one. A one. Um, you definitely think you've probably ruined these bait fish, and there's probably not a lot of. Um, you got like a, a chunk of breast meat, but the the legs and stuff you weren't able to get any any actual like valuable meat off of it. I'm gonna be so mad. <laughs> mm -hmm. We could still make a um, like a stock from the bones. Yeah. Is that what yeah. you're arguing yep. now? We're gonna make a seagull it's stock. It's been 16 <laughs> hours since y'all collected your water. Um, you've got yeah. maybe two doses left in there as it's starting to get uh, some seawater splashed in there. Um, too much longer, and it's gonna start getting brackish. Ooh, brackish. <laughs> Pulling out the language. Fancy, Fancy word. word. Yeah. Roscoe does not know what that means, <laughs> nor does Griffin. But I'm going to act like it's the character. <laughs> it means salty. <laughs> okay, yes. context clues did work for me this time. That's yep. good. Um, yeah, still trying to hydrate people periodically, so still handing it out. Okay. Well, you got like two doses of water. Yeah. I say doses. Two servings of water, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> two doses. Are you using them now, or are we dehydrated now? Uh, at this point, not particularly dehydrated. Okay. Definitely starting to get hungry. You had your food about. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say it's been a while. Been, I guess over twenty-four hours ago since you each had a piece of bread. So for food-wise, you have essentially left now one more piece of bread, three potatoes, and um, basically a gull. Some gull breast. A gull a breast. A mangled seagull and two fish? The two fish are ruined. <laughs> oh, you ruined Entirely? the fish completely. Yeah. Oh, that's what he said. <sighs> Rough, but... Well, one, that's... you definitely ruined wow. those fish. <laughs> seven. Wow. <laughs> And I'm just blissfully dreaming of all <laughs> the food yeah, that we're going to have. And sandwiches and pie. Yeah. And 
the potatoes. We still have the essence of fish. Captain did not make a mistake. <laughs> Don't forget about oh, so the potatoes. So now you're gonna put the fish scales in this weird stock. So it's like <laughs> it's getting weirder and weirder. Yeah. We could strain it through the shirt. Anyway, that's a that's a <laughs> problem for the future. Um, we need to figure out how we're gonna cook them the if we can. So I have a match, right? Or yes. Some you've got you got some basically matches. a book of matches um, that is mm -hmm. definitely somewhat wet now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, either it was on you when you jumped in the water, or you left it on the boat. Neither case really took it out of the toolbox. <laughs> took it, yeah, just dumped it out of the toolbox into mm -hmm. the bottom mm -hmm. where all the water's been bailed from. So I mean, chances of them lighting a little slim, but still possible. Mm -hmm. If I do it hard enough, it'll work. Just punch them. Use those factor. punchy, punchy <laughs> fists. Yep. A little bit of oil. It's fine. For Maybe sure. some fish oil. Yeah, oil. Well, I mean, you've got some fish oil. <laughs> you do. That may be, that may be one Maybe. of the only things you could salvage. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's no issue. more seasonal affective disorder for <laughs> Roscoe. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 oh. Okay. Are y'all eating? Are you drinking? Um, I don't know what we. I. Oh yeah, we do have some food that doesn't require cooking. You got three potatoes, yeah. one uh, thing of bread, and um, a gold breast, which could be eaten raw. And some spices. And some and spices. Some spices. <laughs> and some spices. You could spice up that that gold meat. <laughs> yeah. Just like like as a. You guys, y'all would know that if you reached for the spices to pull them off of uh, Bernard, that like he would wake up combative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one's cooking without Not my the spices. Um, <laughs> says the person who ruined some of the food. <laughs> yep. Like, why did the cook not do this before he went to sleep? Well, the, the cook. All was I'm doing saying is, there's. Yeah. Different job. <laughs> <laughs> but like in the pause before he went to sleep <laughs> that could this not have happened I can't think of anything we have to keep the fire so I guess we just have to like hold the match under it kind of awkwardly right like what are you going to yeah. do like yeah. the only wood we have is the boat which we don't want to set on fire that's fine let's do it <laughs> the lid of the um, toolbox the toolbox true I forgot the toolbox is wood I don't know that a wet wooden toolbox lid would catch no. yeah. super easy though and also where are you gonna blades. put it just in the middle of the boat so that okay can we do we have anything else that we could use to insulate the toolbox lid in order to start a small fire inside of it is that a question mm. for me or y'all no <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm trying to think about what resources we have Ooh. wanting to and, start uh, a fire in the toolbox lid the wooden toolbox. So that there. it is not in direct contact with any part of the boat. Mm -hmm. And also would be like something we could sustain as a small fire. The tools This is the train of thought that Virgil is trying to follow. Mm -hmm. The tools themselves are metal and we can maybe like put them underneath. But that's kind of risky because it could still yeah. fall through. Well, and we still need something dry that's going to catch, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. We can insulate whatever fire we have from direct contact with the boat, even though it's wet, but we want to do that anyway. Yeah. I mean, I have some but papers inside a leather satchel, so some of them would probably be not super wet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, like, wearing mm -hmm. the satchel and, like, jumping in the water with Sounds it. Sounds so. like Tinder to me! <laughs> um... Yeah. So paper is in a lid, and I try to might like. Well, are we doing this now, or are we waiting for the cook to yeah. wake up and cook? Yeah, we're this waiting for the cook <laughs> to wake up because we saw. We're... No offense to the captain, but we saw what happened. I mean, offense taken, and we're we're <laughs> waiting. <laughs> we're waiting on the cook. All right, um. I would rather watch what happened to those fish because it was just so artfully done, Captain, than eat them. You're not in the wrong, don't worry. Gold star. 
All right. Um, Y'all yes. have been sailing while all this has been going on. Not sailing, rowing while all this has been going on. Um, and as this sort of shift um, ends, you are right at about midnight again. It has been two days, 48 hours since your boat sank. Um, the, sh the cook wakes up um, right around the time that the, uh, the captain spots what appears to be a lighthouse in the distance. And that is where we will take a break. All right. All right, we're going to take a second. Our producer is going to throw up the screen.
<laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back to the role of play. Uh, we are we are looking at the open boat by Stephen Crane. Um, currently our characters, uh, Virgil, Jesse, Roscoe, and Bernard. Uh, are stranded on the open ocean in a dinghy. Um, they are currently trying to row and keep their boat from turning over uh, and keep themselves afloat while... Uh, <laughs> didn't, rec didn't realize the head dance would be loud. It's fair. Um, try not to keep the boat from flipping over and sinking uh, while they try to get rescued or at least uh, make it to safety. Uh, when we last left, uh, they had rowed into the night uh, and around midnight, around the time the cook was waking up from a nice eight-hour uh, sleep. Um, the uh, captain of the boat, Jesse, uh, who had been on lookout, uh, spotted um, what they believed to be a lighthouse in the distance. Um, this lighthouse does not appear to be functioning. Um, and that sort of coincides with the, the information you have, that there was a defunct lighthouse uh, that was no longer maintained in this general area. Um, but it is still a nice thing to see uh, on the horizon when you've not seen anything except open ocean for quite a while. So, uh, yeah, there's a light. <laughs> um, <laughs> Let's see, so that was y'all's rowing through the night. Um, so it is now midnight. Um, the cook has woken up. I think right before the break, y'all were talking about trying to cook or eat something, uh, as it has been yes, about... but after the cook right. woke up. It's been about 48 hours <laughs> since captain, the boat originally no sank. longer allowed. Yep. Um, we, we did also have the captain uh, ruin, a, ruin the two fish y'all caught, uh, trying to... Uh, uh, prepare them with a pocket knife uh, and not doing a great job uh, rolling what amounts to a critical failure on that uh, and also not getting quite as much meat off of the the goal as probably could have been salvaged by someone with more uh, adept skills um, Wow <laughs> I feel seen <laughs> um, so you are are now um, confronted with um, about two servings of water, you have one um, set of bread, three raw potatoes, and a gall breast. Um, and that is that is the food that you wake to find. Also some spices. I don't want to forget about the spices because the cook did risk injury going back into the ship to grab some spices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh. There's a lighthouse. Oh, that wasn't the most restful sleep. What? You lead with Wait, the good news. Wonderful. And seagull. Also some mangled seagull. How? What do you mean mangled seagull? Like you caught another seagull? Nope. I don't understand. Remember how we caught those fish? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we were seven. Have, no, we don't we have those either them. anymore. No, that was a dream. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I'm definitely sure we caught at a least two. No, no. Wow. Well. Did you Virgil's just nodding. Yes, we eat did. them while I was asleep? No. no. Definitely worse. not. <laughs> and then I turned, to, I turned to the captain, and I'm like, again? <laughs> captain, we talked about this. I was sure that I would do it correctly this time. If we're all being honest, I think I could have used better instruction, but I'm not going to hold it against you. We're did not even ask for help just dove right on in there <laughs> cut things but up we're, I, we're still I, Captain. on track uh, to make a stew potentially um, and there's a lighthouse to make a stew let's get to that lighthouse I mean we should certainly eat something though how close is the lighthouse what? I mean, it's still in the distance. It's still a long ways away. Like, you're seeing it on, like, the horizon. Okay. So we're talking, like, it's it's the next morning? Is that right? It's getting there. Yep. No. Okay. Yeah. So it's going to be on over in the day before we would get there if we can. Is mm -hmm. that 
the it's pretty fair trajectory. assessment. Okay. Um, I would rather start a fire on land, personally. We could take a little nibble of one of these potatoes, tie us over, sacrifice one potato, everyone gets a bite. Everyone gets a quarter of a raw potato. That's right. Mm. <laughs> Captain starts cutting it up. Half of it falls in the I water. personally think they messed up when they started cooking potatoes. No, but the moment the captain starts to go reach to cut something up, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's the cook's job. Yep. Cook, if you could portion this potato, uh, please. So there's 12 of us. I will portion it. Okay, so you cut a potato into what? four pieces. Um, yes, with precision, speed, and beauty. You are easily able to uh, portion this out into a quarter. Um, each of you really realizes a quarter of a potato really just sort of whets your appetite for more. Um, mm -hmm. Of like a stew. Later. <sighs> like a stew later. Pie. Virgil's ham slowly sandwich, beginning, beginning lasagna, to question. Meatloaf. <laughs> salad. Nope, nope. Corn. Raw potato. Raw potato. <laughs> Raw potato. <laughs> I forgot the other foods. Raw potato. <laughs> Bait fish. No way. Come on, Roscoe. <laughs> I'm trying. Stop. <laughs> Are y'all drinking any water? Now? I did. I. I'll have a little sip. I did have. I don't know why. I like look this way and then tilted <laughs> it that way. <laughs> Your face, you're like it's very distracting for like <laughs> very you said two two full servings so we could each have like half a serving like a yes. sip each basically essentially okay yeah. yeah okay okay yeah so you each take Let's half do that. a serving of water and a quarter of a potato mm-hmm man that's a lot of math for me i gotta go back <laughs> to fractions like <laughs> Rough We're hoping <laughs> <laughs> that was a real life fail for Roscoe. <laughs> oh, is the cook putting spice uh. on that quarter of a potato? Is that what I saw? I'm not a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that means you are out of water. Um, you have a mm -hmm. little bit of food left uh, in the form of one, two potatoes, one uh, piece of hardtack, and a gull breast. Um, I keep wanting to say chicken breast, but no. Um, mm -hmm. So. Um, it is it is the night. You know that there is a um, lighthouse in the distance that you caught uh, just a momentary glimpse of as the moon sort of moved behind it. Um, and you, what are y'all up to? I, I had like a vision. To take a nap. <laughs> yes. You should definitely sleep. Yep. And while you're out, I'm gonna take this and I pull the liner liner of um, off of them and off of Virgil. Oh, no. And I, when I was sleeping, I had a dream that we uh, fashioned a sail out of clothes and to, to give us a bit of a break and a bit of a boost as we rode towards land. So the single thing you've taken is Virgil's bandaged sail? I thought that was just, I didn't think it was your bandage. I thought that was just like on you to keep you warm. No, that was Was it a bandage? No, no. Oh, okay. That's the I don't. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't. Inside. <laughs> I don't also, de bandage you. Inside, but yeah. No. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't remove your bandages. That's my bad. Thank you. <laughs> I've been punching machinery so long, I forgot what a sail was. This is beautiful. Good job, Jeff. Uh, so we. I feel like <laughs> jackets could be. We used. do have yeah, some so jackets, like jackets. A burlap sack and a t shirt. <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's gonna be so cold. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it sounds like Virgil is is taking a nap. Yes. Take one, taking yes. a, I mean, you're taking a sleep. It's eight hours worth of sleep. Yeah. Well, Virgil's been up for two and a half days. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you are quite tired. Uh, so yeah. Definitely not something somewhat spoiled. Uh, Virgil is used to. <laughs> Could we? Does not like this. Can we see the lighthouse well enough to not need a navigator? Uh, no. Or no. 
Okay. So you sort of you know it's on <laughs> you know it's on the distance, like you saw it in the, the moonlight, but you would still essentially uh, whoever is navigating, if it is somebody, they will have uh, advantage. On their okay. Navigation. Gotcha. Also, you don't want to go straight towards the lighthouse. Right. Um, some divine inspiration told me that that's not what lighthouses are for. Not <laughs> right. That's not what not lighthouses what are for. for. Sort of the opposite. Right. So shout uh, yeah, out to that, that divine, divine inspiration. inspiration was uh, Virgil's know-it-all attitude telling you this before he went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so what roles are people taking? I keep on rowing. Keep on rowing. All right. I guess I'll start bailing again. And I will navigate. Navigate? Um, <laughs> my goal is for us to get close to shore and kind of assess. Not to go all the way in. I feel like we should... You don't see shore yet. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, As we're getting closer, that's what I'm looking for. Is like an avenue in because the, the surf near the shore is choppy usually so we probably want to be at our best when we're trying to get through that if we mm. ultimately do mm. so hi captain also virgil already has advantage would that be double advantage for them or no just still straight up advantage? well it's also okay. it's nighttime so it would have been a straight roll okay for virgil. okay so it is actually a roll with advantage which virgil? oh wait no not virgil sorry or not, not virgil. mixing no, up mixing up my, just, my my strength is, is intelligence and knowledge. I was like, that's not... Uh, but yeah, go ahead and <laughs> give, me that, give me that roll, Jesse, uh, yeah. for your perception, which you do have advantage on it. Um, okay. And uh, uh, Roscoe, give me a strength check. Double Ooh. fours. Well, I don't need to roll again. That's a six. Oh, yeah. You nailed it. Oh, I'll just show off my pretty die. Ooh, Ooh. pretty. Ooh. So you yeah. both... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Jesse, the captain, is able to keep you on track towards the shore, um, going in the direction of the lighthouse, but not directly towards it, because y'all got a hot tip that that's a bad idea. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Roscoe is able to keep the boat from from tipping, uh, powering through with uh, this rowing. Um, yeah, so you row through to the morning, and... Um, So, we have reached this point. Um, all right. So, at this point, Virgil, you have, are waking up. You've had your eight hours of sleep. It is early morning. Uh, you definitely feel more rested. Um, what uh, what are y'all up to? Now, Ben. Did the captain ever sleep? Not yet. Is it the captain's turn? Not it's yet. Ben. All right, captain. Hit 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 the hit the deck. Whatever. Hit. Go <laughs> lay down. We got this. Don't hit the deck. We don't want to punch holes in it. How close are lay we? Lay down to gently. Shore? Punch the deck. <laughs> no, uh, no, you, don't punch the deck. Oh. Do not see shore yet, uh, Captain. You rolled really well on your check, uh, and has grown into morning. Um, this area um, that you're getting ready to head into does appear to be pretty choppy. Hmm. Is this um, an island? You said that I was aware of this lighthouse. Yes, it is an island. Okay. So, do I have any, like, papers about, like, a map of this island with maybe uh, a, a, an appropriate approach marked? Um you know that the island is fairly close to the shore it would you are not that far there is a little bit of a an inlet that you have to go through um, but this area has a lighthouse um, due to the fact that it is quite rocky and dangerous for ships um, to go around it would mean definitely adding a couple days to your journey and of course it's a lighthouse, so you know it's primarily for like the ship you were on before it sank. Right. You're in a dinghy, so you're at less danger because you're not on a big boat that's reaching far under the water. Right. 
Um, well, so with that information, would it make sense to not go toward the lighthouse if I know that the lighthouse is near shore? Like, go back out to the ocean? No, I thought you were saying that the island that the lighthouse is on is near the, sh the coast. Yes. And should we... I don't know where we are in relation to this. So, does moving toward the island make sense when we need to be going toward the coast? Moving in the general direction, but not straight at the island, means you're moving towards the coast. Okay. It's a riskier shortcut than going around. Yes. If, if you I'm go, if you go straight right. towards okay. the shore from here, you will go through a little bit of a rockier part of the ocean. If you were to try to like go north and like completely go around the rocky area as it's outlined on your maps, then it mm -hmm. would add time to essentially instead of going straight across, you're going right. north and then, um, I guess in this case, west. Okay. So it's like that. Yeah, pretty much. Except you are coming from yeah, you are <laughs> coming from what is the top left corner of yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that made it worse. How um how much longer? Uh potentially a day or two. That's many. We haven't even gotten to the seagull yet, so the <laughs> the partial seagull. The the so it's only so it's another we day or two one. if we go around the lighthouse. If we try to take the long it's, way, it's an additional day or two if you try to go around. Yes, gotcha. But we also have no more water. Did we? How how, how did how did the as I've been struggling with it? How has the um the makeshift sail worked out? Me an intelligence check. Uh, does anyone want to help me on that? <laughs> well, when were you? You were making it while I was asleep. Otherwise, I would help you. This is, I mean, this, this is, is this is the, the this is the Captain Fish all over again. <laughs> I mean, if this is the point at which I wake up, then yes, because this is my strength yeah. is like brains, and I'd be all up like, hey, you, should you wake do this up just in time to see this makeshift better. like That's sail, what like, you, fall no, over what, to the water. Hey, no, 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 no. Uh, everybody. Yes, my clothes. Everybody, give me a dex <laughs> save. Everybody. Yeah, give me a dex check. <sighs> See if the rock in the boat here with a six, four, three. three. <sighs> Got a dice going into timeout. Oh, that's a one. A one. Oh, so that's what happened to my shrapnel. The cook oh, my shrapnel scrambles to catch out. the. The, the sail he's put Six. together okay. as it as it falls uh, and and tumbles over into the water. Um, but does he get the sail? Yeah, I mean he can hold on the sail. I mean you're just treading water work, outside okay. the boat. It's it's mostly the concern is now he's wet and cold, and he's got to get mm -hmm. back in the boat. Yeah, it's not like he can't swim. Right. Or hold on to a. Or can or hold on to. Thinks about jumping in. But remember. No, Roscoe, don't jump okay. in. <laughs> so close. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say I didn't see you jumping in to save me. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh. Cook, good I save can on that. Hold out a wrench. Because he knew you could rescue yourself. <laughs> I, I climb back into the boat. Okay, uh, give me a dex check. With without. Concern or <laughs> oh yeah, cool. Nice. You're Four. able to climb into the boat. You have uh, the rest of the members sort of press their weight, lean in the right directions. You get a little bit of help, uh, and you are pulled back into the boat. And you're able to sort of fish in this um, this piece of uh, sail that you had you had tried to put up, uh, and it didn't it didn't go well uh, the first time around. <laughs> I think but Virgil's awake now, Parker right? Parker might be able mm -hmm. to help with that, yeah. Nice yeah. cook. I yeah. was equally as worried about you as I was <laughs> the captain. <laughs> Thank you. That's so nice so of you to say. <laughs> I can hold this big sail if you need. <laughs> Help people yeah, actually. I think we probably will. All right. That way you can figure out the hard parts and I'll just keep it up easy. 
All right. So indeed. Uh, I think it sounds like Virgil is going to attempt to to put up the yeah. Cell. So yeah. in 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 less dire circumstances, Virgil might have been supportive and want to try and help the cook and let the hook take the could let the cook take the lead. In dire circumstances, Virgil is like, "How do I? Wait? <laughs> this is how you do this." <laughs> so Virgil, you get the idea of taking one of the the tools that's laying in the bottom of the boat. That's basically like a little hand drill and putting a little hole through the bench in the center of the boat and, and sort of stick the pole of this sail down into there so that it has um, sort of the support and requires a little bit less. Mm. It is still sort of a makeshift sail, so you gotta sort of wrestle it to point it in the direction you wanna go. And it still sort of requires some maneuvering with sails, but um, there, there will be um, advantages to having done this. Excellent. Looks like you won't even have to hold it. <laughs> it's good because we don't have anyone else can. who can just hold things. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess the captain could while navigating. <laughs> did you... How did you... Did you not use the oar? What did you use, did for, I the, use the oar? for the sail? Oh, yeah. What did... What did well, I don't know. It's whatever uh, Bernard gave me. What was Bernard cobbling together? Um, that I took away from you because you were doing bad. Wood, wood pole. Um, yeah. Meaning <laughs> the an only oar. thing we had was an oar. Um, yeah, fair point. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, now it's a sail. Yeah. Who needs to row? So right. we can use the Me. other. So are we using the as a rudder? As a rudder? Yeah, we'll use the other as a rudder. Perfect. I okay. Love that poem. Yeah. The open sailboat. The other as a rudder. Virgil's like note to self. Let me write that poem. Later. Other as a rudder, <laughs> name for book. That's the one. Yep. No. Nope. Yes. There'll be a poem in the book. <laughs> oh. All right. So you have you have fashion to the sell. book <laughs> the, the book titled All Hands on Dingy. I do believe it was. <laughs> All Hands on Dingy. No, that was a terrible. Oh, that's title. a better one. Using... <laughs> I didn't hear that one the first time. No, no. Not using All Hands on Dingy. <laughs> when you're choosing it's between the title. oars, you could call it either or. Really oh. <laughs> you better you better watch yourself, Virgil. I think this man's the genius. <laughs> I think all fourteen of us agree. <laughs> um, all right. You uh, you have uh, fixed a sail, um, and you need to make a decision about where you're going because there was some discussion about that. Oh right, that's how it started. Yeah. Um. So, can I clarify? I don't think that it would be quite possible to navigate to this island and then navigate away from this island. No, probably not. Okay. It would be pretty dangerous to do so. I yeah. mean, you can attempt it. This is role yeah. playing. You can do whatever you want. Right. <laughs> but if you're asking, could yeah. you do this safely? Uh, you don't think so. Right. That's yeah. That's what I'm. What I'm assuming. Even in, even in role playing, actions have consequences. Yeah, right. Wait, what? <laughs> right. I mean, you know enough about how lighthouses work to know that you don't. You don't generally go to them. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. And I don't, I like, I turn to the crew and say, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to make our stew very soon. I mean, we didn't mm. really have any water with which to I, yeah, make I wasn't. this stew anyway. We, we did drink the Gotta be honest, water. Captain. Um, so I think, yeah. Yeah, so, gotta be honest, I think. We should just go for it and then eat our food. Like as a go stew. The risky way? Raw potatoes. Yes! Just do it. Oh. Mm. Straight shot. Mm -mm. Screw your courage <laughs> to the sticking place, Captain. <laughs> this decision I mean, doesn't matter. It's just flip a coin. If anyone can navigate it, we can. <laughs> now the captain's getting punchy. <laughs> <laughs> lack of sleep I'm starting to question um but that's a good point um 
I think going around the safer way would make it easier for me to rest well. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. We do have one. We, we can all have two more quarter potato servings, right? Right. So half a potato for everyone. But we will be a little bit potatoes. delirious. No, it's not seven. We will be a little bit delirious by the time we get to shore, though, because that will be a few days with no water. We we have to figure out a way to to get water. Yes. Yeah, that's definitely a thing that we need to do. Um, Do you think anyone in the lighthouse will see us? What if we just like wave? There's no one in the lighthouse. Come save us! It's not. It's not a functioning lighthouse. (sighs) So unless there's some somebody hanging out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cruel. <laughs> what invisible force gave us a lighthouse with That's no one so in true. it? That's so true. Some jerk. <laughs> yep. Some it's... uncaring universe. <laughs> yep. It's like the universe doesn't care about us. Um, <clears throat> yeah. There is some water in potatoes. So... We eat our potato. We can't portion. use that <laughs> for making a stew. Potato juice. Potato yes. juice. <laughs> it's my favorite yeah. kind of juice. That's right. It doesn't come in a jar. Um, so we'll have to. We have one portion of hardtack, mm-hmm. so that would have to be divided up. We would all, yeah. Yeah, I say we'll go the safer route. We can go that long without food. It won't be comfortable, but we can survive it. It's more so that we need to figure out the best way to get water. Okay. All right, well, you go to sleep. We'll we'll go around and then... We'll figure something out for the water when you wake up. Virgil will be on it. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to bailing out the boat. Okay. So the okay. captain is bailing, or the captain is sleeping. Yep. Nope. <laughs> the captain is taking a nap. Why would you suddenly think the captain's doing any work? Right. Not out. <laughs> and uh, Bernard is bailing. Uh, is anyone navigating or are everyone else rowing i would i feel like i should be navigating like yes. someone should be because should this probably. is not a good space to not have a navigator <laughs> okay so you're gonna so nav- i can i can row again okay yeah on my own sounds good um well it's really more right. like directing right because we have the same yeah one. ruddering right. yeah yeah ruddering. Oh right, and we're in a weird scenario I can now. Give before I go to sleep. I can give uh, Virgil the map. Oh, ha ha! I've got the map now. <laughs> Toss the captain overboard. <laughs> we'll go faster with less weight. Uh, I understand math. <laughs> Not much weight, <laughs> like science. All right, so <laughs> the captain goes to sleep. Um, yes. Uh, I need a strength check from um, the uh, from Roscoe. This is partially to sort of steer this um, mm-hmm. strange makeshift sail, and partially to use the other oar to mm. keep yourself facing in the right direction. <laughs> okay, it's two uh-huh. ones. Two oh, no. ones. I was too used to rowing. Uh, I can't do this. All right. Uh, I'm just like <laughs> rowing us. <laughs> you're just like rowing. Uh, yeah. Every, we turn around and see that you're just like rowing sideways and we're just spinning <laughs> in a circle. Uh, everybody give me yeah. a dex check. Uh, Captain, give it to me with disadvantage. Yeah. That's what I expected. Five. I got a four. Staying on this boat. I got a one and a five. I don't know about you, losers. Uh the the cook and the captain you have both fallen overboard as a big wave hits uh directly in the starboard side uh and you both fall into the water um uh 
I'm Do starting I to think you like it fish, in there. Uh, <laughs> see if you see any fish. So I guess, <laughs> is it possible like make it easier for them by like trying to get the boat towards them? Uh, You've done enough. <laughs> I've done enough. That's well, I'm, so I'm, I'm assuming you get the boat over to them. That's part of like them getting. Yeah. Okay. The boat. Yeah. I just didn't know how this works. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I that, guess we're gonna go collect them. Yeah. Virgil says to no one in particular. Throw it over to them. Um, y'all can make your. Tell me who's getting in first, because uh, that matters. Um, who is who's climbing I in first? Oh, I yeah. think it's usually the cook. So the I'll, not I'll a climb in person. First. <laughs> is what I was gonna yeah. say. Yeah. Give me a dex check, Cook. I, I mean, like Captain's probably awake now. Yeah, the reaction, <laughs> I, I think, would fall to the Cook. There. Uh, what'd you roll? <laughs> yes! You are <laughs> unable to get back in the boat. Um, I'm going to need Virgil and uh, nope. uh, Roscoe to give me another dex check. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Ooh, okay. five. I am staying in this boat. Yeah, five, I also yeah. got a All five. Right. Wow, We're still in great there. job, not, everybody. You're not getting me out of this it. This boat is so comfy. Why aren't you here? <laughs> Go ahead and uh, give me another shot at that, Cook. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. I switched dice. Uh, another two. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, like, wet. I'm tired. Yep. I'm a big guy. Uh, yeah, Virgil, <laughs> this, the cook is just basically, like, flailing at the side of the Clawing boat here. The um, Would someone right. please help me up? Got a four. Trying to stay I in got the a four, boat. too. Stop All right. Yeah. Rocking everything. Uh-oh, you're, you're going down as it's I just keep getting yeah. twos. We're getting a little tired of your shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Captain, why don't you Get try? In the boat. <laughs> okay. Why don't you try, Captain? Um... I need to take a take a moment and catch my breath. Okay. All right. Get it together. Water in the cold water. <laughs> <laughs> I also got a two. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, y'all are rolling real bad. Um. Yeah. yeah. We wasted all of our good rolls already. Um. So, at this point, I'm going to say the two people in the boat, you've been rocked around enough. <laughs> uh, you expect them to almost turn over the boat. Um, so, I'm going to give you advantage on your, your dex rolls um, to stay okay. in the boat. Nice. Okay, one and a five. Take that That's five. Fine. All right, I got a four. All right. Uh, and at this point, I expect to be back in the boat, so I get advantage on climbing back in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> same, same thing. Uh, who's who's making their next attempt? I'm preparing to sacrifice myself. <laughs> but that's All not right. gonna do anything. I'm going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, then you're gonna leave me in a boat that I can't do. <laughs> Just mentally. Right, here, here we go. Alone. Here we go. Oh ho ho! Six. You are. Nope. Back scramble in the boat. on. Back in the your, boat. Uh, newfound uh, vigor from uh, consistent failure. I know. <laughs> Cook, your spices it's, are still in here. My dad always said consistent failure was the best motivation. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, so the captain is are still your outside all of the wet boat. Now, or? Wait, my spices are wet? Are they? I'm asking you. You've been in oh, the water. I hope not. <laughs> right before I went down, I passed them over to uh, to Roscoe. I'm like, for a moment, Virgil considers inspiring a mutiny. <laughs> So I'm going to give the three that are in the boat advantage again because this is not a new experience for you to stay in uh, as the captain almost okay. turns the boat over again. Five and a six. I am not leaving this boat. I got a one and a two. <laughs> okay. Apparently Roscoe is leaving the boat now. I am so ready to sacrifice myself. So Roscoe like, like reaches over the side help. of the boat <laughs> to help the captain and the captain pulls Roscoe in. <laughs> captain, I'm coming in. <laughs> help you all right um I, I didn't think this would be the thing that would <laughs> would take us all yep. my wonderful ruddering who Little is we know. who is getting in the boat first i'm trying to like push the captain up give me a boost okay so boost. all right all right i will give you advantage on your attempt to climb in <laughs> yes all right here we go here we go here we go two ones two no. 
Uh, a two and a three. A so three is enough to get invoked. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you are able to crawl in. Uh, the cook <laughs> and uh, Virgil are able to, to hold on and not fall back in. Uh, Roscoe. All right. Just a straight roll? Uh, for you, yeah. A straight roll. It's a dex check. Yeah. That's a three. A three is enough to get in the boat. <laughs> uh, so Yay. you climb in. Um, oh, yeah. You went in the water. Pat him on the back. Great job, Roscoe. Thank you. You saved us. Thank you. I know. It was probably the ruddering that saved us in the end. Well, that was what it. almost killed us. But No, but that's also what saved us. Because why would I have had to <laughs> save us? <laughs> if we were in the water. So you are all back in the boat now. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, three of the four of you are, are cold and dripping mm -hmm. wet uh, from, well, from this experience. That was an eventful nap. Yeah. Um, it was an eventful nap. Uh, you can go back to sleep and finish your nap. <laughs> that was just. I still need a navigator's roll. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. That's yep. me. Um, another five. That's my number of the day today. Five. That is. So I'm going to ask you this because you can. Are you going to go? through the rocks the rocky area oh no are you gonna no go no around? not going through those rocks you're gonna go around no virgil is virgil is is uh is definitely playing cautious on this virgil wants to survive to write his book okay and you don't do that if you're splattered on the rocks <laughs> uh so you start taking the long way uh around that was what we agreed to too uh, i'm is, not i'm not running the rocks that is what you agreed to um I said I briefly considered a mutiny. <laughs> I mean, that's why I asked. Um, all right. So that leads you to here. Um, Roscoe, you are very tired. Um, I will tell you that um, much. Okay. Uh, but it has been another uh, eight hours. You have gotten over into the afternoon, late afternoon. Uh, the captain wakes up from their nap mm -hmm. um, at this point. Um, who slept first? Me. Roscoe. Roscoe slept first. So it has now been 24 yeah. hours since you've slept. Um, you are both very sleepy just in general, but you are also quite tired. Uh, you have been it's rowing like by yourself uh, for quite a while. Just doing the oar yeah. thing. Just, but before that, he was Ruttering. rowing. Two yeah. oars by himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm, that's fair. Roscoe's back looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm tired, but like, never had a pump this good. <laughs> uh, all right. I will, I could take over on the, um, the rudder if. Well, we um, all know the captain's going to go back to navigating anyways. <laughs> Yeah. I could bail, I could take but I think this is where my skills are best <laughs> utilized. They are the captain for a reason. So, I don't mind going back to the rudder, or going to the rudder if you want to bail, okay. um, Virgil. Yeah. Alright. So, um, and what, so we got navigation for the captain, Virgil's yep. going to bail. Um, Bernard is going to control the the rowing, essentially. And does that mean Roscoe is going to sleep, or is Roscoe going to stay awake? Ross is going to sleep. Ross is going to sleep? <laughs> I just, like, put him down. You're like, put him down, Tuck him in, no, no, small no. child. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. Um, give me a navigation I'm not roll. tired. I'm not tired. <laughs> and... Um, Give me a uh, strength check with advantage as you uh, attempt to sort of direct the boat and keep it. Uh, no, it. I thought you were going to say as you attempt to push Roscoe <laughs> down. <Yeah. laughs> oh, what a row! <laughs> My navigation is with advantage, right? Uh, yeah, it's yeah. still daytime. Daytime. Okay. Five. Uh, and... Uh, a five on your navigation, so you're able to, yes. to sail um, uh, pretty uh, pretty accurately as you go. Um, 
Yeah. I'm having a great dream this time. Mm. Not about seagulls. Not about seagulls. It's got raw potatoes. Mm. Delicious. Like a whole like a whole one instead of just a quarter of one? Like two whole ones. I'll splurge oh. in my dream. And for Roscoe, <laughs> that's four? That's like I think it's still 36. seven. Yeah. Seven? Okay. So um, at this point, y'all haven't had any water for a while. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I'll point that out. And yeah. What are you doing? Got anything to juice those potatoes? Yeah. Am I back awake? Yep, you're awake now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't know how to get water. I mean, we don't have any way of... Actually, maybe I can roll for this because I've got some intelligence. Like, can I roll to see if there's any idea that I might have from the knowledge that I have sure. about a solution to this? Sure. Like, <laughs> can I help as a chef to inspire? I mean, oh, I already get this? advantage. Like if, we're like, if we're talking about out loud, I already get advantage because if it's intelligence, but. Oh, okay. Uh, what'd you roll? Oh, okay. Uh, two and a four. Two and a four. Uh, what yeah. you know, you know the vast majority of people lost at sea die from not having water. Um, and yeah. you know that the people who do survive make it to shore as quickly as possible. <laughs> yep. Um, yep, that checks because out. Because <laughs> when you're on the ocean, there's not a lot of ways to yeah. make clean water. Yeah. Yeah. So you Can could you take the salt out could hope for rain i mean i assume we're already like watching the skies hoping for rain but yeah well hopefully we'll be there soon Any you know it's not evidence of incoming rain there is no evidence currently of incoming rain Where are we in regards to the lighthouse now? Because we were choosing to move past it, so are we, like, yeah. <laughs> using Bernard's <laughs> nice map? Uh, so We were planning to go north of it, yes, correct? Yes, you, you essentially went okay. parallel to the shore for a day okay. uh, to try to go around. Um, and, well, you went parallel to the shore for about eight hours. Um, yeah. You can still... Uh, you're probably... <laughs> D, but to the north, uh, in that mm. area. Yeah. So um, it's flipped. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, could. Yeah. Could like, Roscoe attempt to like, physically man the sail so that it catches as much air as possible, to, like speed this up? Because I'm afraid to rudder, but maybe I can just control the sail, well, like, you from the side. You sort of have to control the sail anyways, because it's yeah. just basically a pole that's attached to your boat yeah. so if you just leave it be it's it's gonna turn and flip and not end up okay. in the right direction and um kind of find the the way that is that makes least sense. resistance because um, it's a makeshift sail if it was a proper sail on a boat yeah you could you could probably try to attempt to get a little bit of extra out of it but really what you're the work you're well. putting in as the person who would be rowing is to like keep it directed keep it catching wind um as much as it sort of can Mm. Well, if we're past the island, do we turn for the shoreline? Just make straight. Yeah, let's head to head towards it. Okay. So I don't know. Do I this. mean, that's a that's a possibility. Yeah, on I believe in the us. trajectory that we <coughs> were on, based on the map, mm -hmm. you said it would be an additional one to two days to go around the yes. rocky place, mm -hmm. uh, and it's been a day. So it's are been we? Eight hours. It's, it's been. Oh, it's only been eight hours. <laughs> yeah. So how so long? Would, you said it would be an additional day or two, but how long are we adding a day or two to? Is what I'm asking. Um. I mean, if you were to turn and go straight, you could potentially be the to the shore in eight to sixteen hours. Okay. If you continue to go north, so that you're completely out of the rocky area you will have to travel another 16 hours north 
and then turn towards the shore and then go across. So it's 16 hours plus 8 to 16 hours. Yes. Oh, that's too many hours. That was not clear from <laughs> what the captain said before. Although when I originally asked the captain how far from shore we were, the answer was like, oh yeah, we're only like a day or two, and now we're like on day three. <laughs> Starting to once again wonder. <laughs> Careful, Virgil. I know you want a good book, but we have to trust our captain. Yeah. Okay. I like look to Rosco for some so for some support. Obviously, the captain is just trying Hashtag to keep hope side. Right, captain? Right, captain? Right, yeah, captain? We're. I just want all of us to make it. Um, exactly. Obviously. So it's going to be if we continue going the safe way, it's going to be a day and a half ish more. Uh, 32 hours least. up yes. to 32 hours and that's if you're right uh, yes. I mean it would be it would be at least 32 hours yes yeah you said no, 16 plus 8 to 16 16 yes so that's so that this is also assuming be... that your navigation is always on spot sure hmm sure so it could be a lot of time to go with no water. Yeah, it could be another 24 hours. It could be another 36 or 48 hours if we get blown off course. Yeah. So either way, even if we were going directly to shore and were successful, we would still be half a day away from the shore right now. And we've already been without fresh water for a while so we yeah even if we were going to risk everything we would need another solution um what what did they teach you about being ship shipwrecked in uh officer school they teach you to try <laughs> to get to shore <laughs> sure to not get shipwrecked i mean, I mean also don't get shipwrecked but uh, I mean, yeah, that's what they, they teach you to try you to get shipwrecked. <laughs> yeah, they try to teach you to get to shore as quickly as possible. Because you are likely not yeah, with any food gonna, or well, rations yeah. and your chances of being found on the open ocean are very, very slim. As we just learned, even the safe ocean is very dangerous ocean. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should just risk it for the... Mm, I, mm, risk it for the potato. That's the phrase. Yes. Yes. It's good for the, for the For the viewers. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> for the excitement. Yes. Breaking the so fourth wall. So taking uh, 8 to 16 hours going directly towards shore from here. We did great in that storm. Apparently we do really well in high stress situations oh. and terribly in regular stress situations. I mean, that's fair. As long as the captain doesn't fall out of the boat... No problem. Tie myself loose. Should we tie you boat. to some? So that the I don't boat want to be tied when you fall out. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yep. So that when it capsizes, I immediately drown. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Let's do it. Uh, they, they, you, you told me once that they taught you in officer training school to get to shore as fast as possible. That's true. And fast as possible, straight ahead. That's true. We've already gotten through some of the dangerous parts, so maybe we can get through the rest. Yeah. If there's no option for fresh water on the horizon, yes, I say let's yeah. try to get to shore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's taking on what role? I assume the captain is I navigating. I ask everyone if it's okay. Captain's I'm navigating. Yeah, I'm, I'm navigating. I know I beefed it last time, but can I try to rudder again? I swear I'm good at this. <laughs> now, when the situation is even more dangerous, yes. please. Sure. Let, sure, yes. why not? All right. So you're going to do, do the, the rowing slash ruddering slash sailing mm -hmm. task. Uh, what are what are the, the cook and the correspondent? I mean, I can keep bailing. Would it benefit us to have two people on the ruddering task mm. at this point? Like, we had two rowers, so would it benefit us to have two people managing that part, part of things? 
Uh, potentially. The rower already gets advantage for that. Mm -hmm. um, it would essentially mean you had two chances to meet the DC. Sweet. I'm happy to keep bailing if the two of you I'll do want that. To I'll, I'll offer assistance. Okay. I'll just offer uh, assistance okay. to that. So, Encouragement. So <laughs> yes. Tiny bites of raw potato. So we have the correspondent is uh, you got this. bailing. Bailing, yeah. And um, we've got rowing. I gotta dig that shrapnel a little further into my body. <laughs> rowing slash um, working. So I need navigator. Give me a uh, roll for um, perception, and I yep. need um, the Roscoe and Bernard each give me a strength check with advantage. We each get advantage. Does that mean like is there do advantages stack? Uh, there's only you can only have advantage uh, once. So we've got a three from gotcha. there. Oh wait, sorry. Hold on. I just I just finished drawing this and I immediately forgot to use it. <laughs> Rosco also got a three. You also got a three. Yeah, I got a one and a three. You got a, a one right. and a three. Uh, so y'all are, are pressing through here and um, trying to keep the boat uh, on course. Uh, you do at the last minute see a rock pop up under a wave that you hadn't noticed before. Uh, the boat dings into it. Everybody give me a dex check. So the dingy dings? Even if I punch the rock before we get to it, <laughs> that rock. I still have to do this. Okay. That's a four. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. Four, six, Got another five. five. Six. I am not falling out Three. of this boat. Everybody like to stay in the boat, please. has stayed in the <laughs> boat. Uh, and you have navigated your way um, at the end of this. Let's see. Y'all got into the evening. So um, it is uh, the middle of the night at this point. It's midnight. Um, what the captain spies sort of at the end of this shift as the moon is rising you think you see a sliver of land in the distance i usually hate land but this makes me Huzzah! so happy <laughs> i hate being in this boat <laughs> uh yeah and as you Ships as you go on that. into the morning you will you will find that um there is land in the distance um the 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 so that's the bright side of things. The, of course, mm -hmm. the downside of things is when you're on the ocean, the closer you get to land, waves begin to break, uh, which means they're more dangerous. Mm -hmm. So the waves <laughs> are uh, gaining in strength the closer you get. Um, but uh, what do you do? Keep I on keeping on. Yeah, I think Roscoe also just wants to keep on heading towards a bigger, better boat right. on the horizon. Roscoe, you are still quite tired. Is that boat Is that land? land? <laughs> Physically. Uh, it's the biggest of boats. It's the biggest boat that there is. The biggest boat. <laughs> I've and never thought about it like this. Your this whole world everything. perspective change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Roscoe, you are quite tired. Um, you could, uh, it could benefit I, from doing a task that's less physically strenuous. strenuous? Yeah. Oh, I thought I just slept. So the yeah. sleeping redid your uh like napping but you have been doing uh physical labor at this point gotcha. for like over 72 hours i think uh is where at uh, 72 yeah, we hours where you like reached switch out um, i could bail you could bail um if i have to <laughs> <laughs> really like rowing <laughs> um all right except it's not rowing anymore we took that away from you <laughs> all right so yeah. you're going Would, to bail yeah how is everybody else doing on sleep? Um, Are we at a point where folks seem actively, uh, like, detrimented by lack of sleep? Uh, it is, it is, because um, Roscoe went to sleep after it had been 24 hours, and then y'all went about where nobody slept. So, um, at this point, both the cook and the correspondent have been over 24 hours without sleep. I can hold the rudder if the correspondent wants to sleep. But you were the one you slept before I did, so I was gonna say if you want to go take a nap. But All I'm right. I'm fine with either. Like I mean, 
should we try to kind of be in a holding pattern outside of the surf, like near the shore but not close to the shore before we like no, have a No, because then you're push. talking about No, just wake, more time. just wake me up. Just wake us up if we need before to. Before we go go. Yeah. <laughs> Into the Okay. <laughs> Don't want to leave us hanging on. Right. Yeah. I was thinking more like wake me up inside, but that works too. <laughs> oh, hey. The inside the dinghy. Yep. Inside mm-hmm. this boat. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, Captain was woke up outside. So right. That was very rude awakening. That's an ideal. <laughs> Save me. Um, yeah, I mean, if we're if we're not at a point where it seems like they're being negatively impacted by not sleeping and we're this close to shore, then I'm fine with just saying we'll rotate out physical tasks and push to shore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. so. Let's do it. And then we'll all take naps and have stew. So the correspondent is going to be bailing? Ruddering Rudder. slash rowing. Ruddering slash rowing. Wait. Right, because we're taking Roscoe off of... He's bailing. Yeah, oh, he's bailing. I'm bailing. He's bailing. Okay, so yeah. you're ruddering. Roscoe's right. bailing. And I'm ruddering. Okay. And I'm also ruddering. Sounds Two rudderers. Uh, two yeah. rudderers. Give me rolls with advantage. Uh, strength checks. And I need a perception check from that captain. Four and a one. Take that four. I am excited I'm getting to use these dice yes, that I haven't captain. used before. And a four. Delivering. Um, so the waves are more aggressive in this area. You're getting closer and closer to shore. <laughs> uh, but y'all are able to sort of power through that. Uh, avoid so seasick. Um, these, these heavy gross. tossing. Um uh, you're feeling a little bit better, uh, Roscoe, from having gotten a chance to take a break. Um, so used to rowing, though, pulling the water behind me. <laughs> just rowing it out the back of the <laughs> Roscoe's just rowing in his sleep. <laughs> He's like... <laughs> um, all right. And let's see. Use... I did that. Okay. And we're at that there. So you have approached. You can see the shore... Still in the distance a little bit, but you're far closer to it. Um, <coughs> at this point, you have reached what the captain and, and probably Virgil would know that in a boat this size is basically the point of no return. If you start going, the waves, you won't be able to come back out. Um, they will be then breaking towards you in an attempt to come back out in a boat this small, and you will most assuredly be turned over. The surf is pretty choppy right now, um, and um, I'm going to need a perception check from the captain um, related to something else, and um, there'll be a decision you'll have to make, but I'll tell you what happens with uh, the captain's perception check first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Quick question. Has there ever been a successful four-person surf <laughs> on a not surfboard? <laughs> We, we just might do find that out. To um, I got a four. This could be four. that moment. Uh, Captain, what you see uh, on the shore, you are 80 to 90% certain you see a person walking down the beach. Mm-hmm. Um, that is all the information with your four that you have. Okay. So um, the decision y'all need to make is... You could try to wait for better weather, or you can start rowing towards the shore. Um, at this point, you have two people who are who have not slept in over, I guess at this point, um, 32, 32 hours. hours. 36 hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 32, 32 hours, hours. And one who hasn't slept in 24. Um, and... Uh, you haven't had water in a while. That is definitely... You've ate fairly recently, and you do actually still have some more food. Um, yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say, in the last round, would want to eat a potato. Eat Everyone potato. gets so a you potato still have, snack. So you still have <laughs> one hard tack left, and you still have one uh, mm. chicken... Potato. Or not chicken. Gull breast. Gull breast. <laughs> but you yeah. are out of potatoes. Two potatoes, right? You're out of potatoes oh. now, because y'all been cutting them up okay. in the four and, and sharing them, which yeah. is... Um, 
Well, we would we would definitely want to before we head towards shore just eat and eat whatever's left because like we're not going to need it when we get to shore. We're like we're not going to be able to keep it with us, right? We're not going to come back out. It's not like we're going to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's like literally the do or die. Yeah. So yeah. might as well eat some food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. So we all get in total half a portion, right? Because I'm guessing the is the breast just one portion. Yeah. Okay. It'd be like a chicken breast. Yeah, it's not. It's not very much. I'm captain. Did you breast all the time, and I can only eat about half. But <laughs> <laughs> this is Griffin, not Roscoe. <laughs> Uh, Captain, did you decide that we're going to keep going, or are we going to wait? Do, like, given the conditions, does it seem like waiting for, like, morning would be smoother, or is it just that the weather is, is... It's it's hard to predict. It's a little windy right now, which is causing it to, to be choppy. You could wait until morning. The wind might die down. The wind could pick up. It is... Could be a whole lot it worse. It could be worse. It could be better. It could be the same. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Um. And what time of day is it right now? Let me look back. At um. It is morning. Yes. Because y'all were at midnight last time. Right. So if we wait too long, we run the risk of trying to do this at night, yeah. which is extremely dangerous. Right. Yeah. We definitely don't want to do that. Um, yeah, I think if we could eat our food and kind of just try to stay stable for like, um, I don't know, a respite and then push in like later today, if it's morning now. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna wait eight hours. Uh, so since you're already basically at the shore, you um, don't really need a navigator to mm-hmm. to keep you on track. Um, you still do need someone mm-hmm. to sort of maintain the boat and its distance and everything. And it's you always got to have someone bailing water out, or else it'll fill up too much. Um, but that role is no longer necessary. Okay. Sweet. So and that means one of us can also get something, get some rest. Potentially two of you could get some if we're gonna, rest. If we're right. going to be... Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, correspondent, Cook, do you want to yep. take, take a rest? <laughs> Guess so, if we're not going anywhere. All right. Eat some potato. Yep. Let's snuggle up. No, the potato's gone. I thought we... Yeah, we eat all the potatoes. Unless you're, like, hiding potatoes. No. (laughs) Eat all the potato, eat all the hardtack. The, uh, gull. Mm, Raw gull meat. Mm -mm. Virgil, Virgil's not real keen about that. Yeah. It's the best kind of gull meat I've ever had, I will say. Brined? Is is it the only kind of gull meat you've ever had? (laughs) Unimportant. I think it's very important. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Were you lying before? <laughs> All right. So if um, does that person seem to see us while they're resting? I was just about to say. Um, that is what you rolled for, and you failed. You do not. Know. Okay. Okay. So I'm I mean, we haven't done watching. anything to attempt to make a a stink either. Yeah. You don't have like a flare gun or anything. Please do, do not set the matches. sail on fire, but they're wet now. All right, so <laughs> if the correspondent and the cook are going to sleep, what Apparently. are the captain and the... Uh, the I guess hey, we're going to miss so out on the captain doing work. I was feeling a little bit better after the bailing, right? Mm-hmm. So since I'm strong, I could row. And I think, if I remember right, the captain isn't strong. Yeah, yeah so it might be better for the bailing. But we're also not going anywhere, right? That's true. Mm-hmm. We're just trying to maintain but still a place. Mm-hmm. 
feel like somehow this. I'm, I'm still not go volunteering there. for. I'm just saying that seems. You're not going. Yeah, you're not going I anywhere. Could. But the waves are quite aggressive in this area. So mainly you're mm. keeping yourself like turned properly and not sure. getting hit head on by these waves. Punch every wave that comes our way. <laughs> oh. So. All right. right. We'll bail. Bail out the boat. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me. Sound like you said you were jumping out of the boat. You're like, I'm gonna bail out of here. Give me a strength check with advantage on maintaining the boat's uh, direction. All right. I'm gonna do the opposite of. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Whoa! Five on the first one. Ooh. Okay, five is what we're gonna go with, not the one. <laughs> okay. I think the five is no. a little bit better. Don't All right, so you're. Do you, I love that you said you think you do because Roscoe <laughs> might not know which of those numbers is better. <laughs> so you have uh, managed to keep the uh, boat uh, from turning over, so that's good. Um, the the cook and the correspondent have woken up. It is now the afternoon, and also I got a roll of this. Oh, I don't like that. Um, <laughs> the weather has not changed. Jeez. Oh, okay. But two slept. But it's not worse. It's not worse. Yeah. Uh, that is an outcome <laughs> that could have happened. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do I see any more people on the shore? Uh, you do not, and you no longer see the person you have. Yeah, it's been help. hours. That why would that person oh, still be out here? If they were gonna get help, then there would be more people. But they probably. That's didn't true. See us, so. Oh well. You are now all now quite thirsty. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right, we just we that gotta makes get sense. there. Yep. We gotta go. This is it. <coughs> you all only right. get one shot. So I will say, you know that making this push. The sail won't work. You would need yeah. to row. Um, so, we'll yeah, to so that you disassemble take it down. Take it apart. Take it apart. The oar. <laughs> All right. Um, tell me what uh, roles everybody's taken on for this push, and I will tell you how it will work. Okay. Navigation. I will help row. Captain's eyes back at the front of the boat. <laughs> got got captain on navigation. We've okay. got uh, rowing with the cook. Ooh, I'd watch that show, Growing with the Cook. <laughs> and the I book. assume Roscoe is going to help yeah. grow as well? Roscoe. Yeah, I don't feel like Roscoe is going to be reduced to bailing at this point, so I guess that's me. It's the final push. It's all or nothing. Oh. Roscoe is like, all right, I'm thinking about, I don't have I don't have my uh, 1900s. Actually, no music player was invented by then. Never mind. <laughs> I don't have my uh, live band performing my hype music. I just have to imagine it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, all right just you're just like humming to you're humming she santi see yourself mm -hmm. oh. so um <laughs> basically uh i'm gonna go through and have y'all make a series of checks on various things as we go um okay. and i'm gonna tell you what happens so um i'm gonna need the two rowers to make a strength check as you start this headlong push inward. Is this also with right. advantage? Uh, this one is not with advantage. Or just you are getting advantage Do because I get of advantage because I'm strong? You get advantage or because no. of your your roll, um, but it is does not grant advantage normally due to First roll was a six. Ooh, a six. The second roll is a five, so I'll still go with the six. Alright, so <laughs> got a two over there. Um, <laughs> Primarily owing to the the just forceful last push of the the oiler uh, Roscoe as he uh, is putting everything he's got into this rowing, uh, y'all are y'all are making good progress and you're able to keep the boat afloat. Uh, give me another uh, strength check as more and more waves around you are crashing. They're breaking, they're getting into the sides of the boat. Sometimes they're lifting you and pushing you forward. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, the first one is a, a one, and then I got a four, so it's a six and a four. Six and a four. Um, this time, uh, the cook picks up the pace, uh, whereas <laughs> that momentary push had tired the oiler out a little bit. Um, the Good cook work, is crew. thinking about he's thinking about ham is sandwiches and pie. Able to, to <laughs> Roscoe gets sick of she she sa sea shanties, <laughs> and the yeah. cook starts to love it. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, give me another strength check as you are continuing to approach the shore. Oh, 
five and a five. So that's a five. We've got a six from the oiler uh, at the last minute. Um, or a five from the oiler. And or a five from, from the, the oiler, yeah. six from the, sh uh, the cook. Uh, the cook is able to sort of um, dive into the side of the boat, uh, keep um, an almost turning over, um, but you are able to power through. Uh, give me another strength check as you are, you can see the shore. It's getting closer and closer. Um, that as it, as it gets closer, it seems more inviting. But as it does, uh, it also seems more dangerous. We've got a one. Okay, I got a six. And we got a six. <laughs> uh, I got a two and a six. The so. oiler powers through, uh, but I it is not enough, songs. and your boat flips. <sighs> Uh, you have capsized, oh no. and you what? must now start swimming. Um, okay. During this, uh, the chaos of the waves and, and being in a capsized boat and being this close, there's not really enough time to take heed of who's around you. Um, it's just a mad dash for the shore. So I need everybody to give me a strength, uh, strength check. Okay. And I'm at disadvantage because I'm... Physically, you, right. you are at disadvantage. Okay. Yes. All right. I got a five and a six, but if Captain dies, I will push them so hard they make it. I also got a five and a six, so. Ooh. Five. A five. I'll go with my six yeah. then. Four. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, you the the shore is right there. Um, go ahead and give me one more strength check as you are swimming for your lives. Another four. <laughs> Do you I want mean, to hear what I got? Actually, <laughs> three. <laughs> I got a two and a one, so. You got a two and a one? <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> I got a three and a three. What'd you get, uh, yeah. correspondent? I made four. sure the two was actually a two. It may have been a backwards five. No, that's a two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fingers crossed it's one of those backwards fives. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all wake up on the shore of the beach, um, and there's a crowd of people around you. Uh, you hear muttering. Uh, concerning you know, what happened. There's a boat off in the distance that you can see that is washed up on shore. It's got a huge crack as the side is dented in. Uh, and slowly as you hear the murmuring and come to your senses, you look around and find that Roscoe the oiler did not make it. No! <sighs> Roscoe! Live by the sea and die by the sea. <laughs> by the sea. Oh, God. But the last name was Highland because the sea is the highest land you can get, and there's no facts to argue that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Jesse for is playing. distraught. <laughs> uh, so that is that is the end of the session. That is actually where the the, I mean, I think we're all the story distraught. ends. Like <laughs> um, I will say that uh, the cook and um, the uh, correspondent also have to be treated for hypothermia, but they are able to pull through. Also, shrapnel. <laughs> shrapnel. <laughs> uh, I'm probably going to die from sepsis after all this. The <laughs> captain, mostly okay. <laughs> so, I appreciate it. replace my coat and my oiler. And uh, oh, just a wow. thing to be replaced. Nothing special. <laughs> so, a great crew. <laughs> this may be the end of my You'll boating You'll live on career. in our memory. I died and with Virgil a really... Virgil never said... <laughs> I died Virgil with never said sail again. Never, never get on a boat again. I had a really bad well, sea I'm gonna shanty go. in my head. That's why I didn't pull mm. through. It was actually a sea waltz. People get confused all the time. <sighs> yeah. So it's I true. find it really fascinating, and we'll, di we'll definitely dive into this on Roll Call, but the the plot of this ended up playing out like the story I does. I know. Spoiler alert. This is and, like, I was like, And honestly, it played out for the same reason that it plays out that way in the book is that the oiler did basically all the rowing. And so essentially, <laughs> like behind the scenes, because you've played now and, and understanding what's going on, um, everybody had a an exhaustion score and a constitution score. And a constitution score was 
time you spent in the water, or um, if you took an injury, your maximum was lowered by two for the entire duration. So the the um, Virgil started out at a disadvantage uh, on that because you took that injury. Um, mm -hmm. You also, as a group, collectively had a, a score that was how lost you are. Um, uh, so that was sort of marking like how many rolls you needed to make and have a successful like perception check t for navigation to get you to shore. And with each successful trip and rowing, you got closer to shore and it, it triggered some things happening uh, going on. But overall, there were things that caused your constitution exhaustion scores to go up and down. If you rowed by yourself, everybody started out with a 10. So you, um, if you were particularly had high stamina, your exhaustion score actually started as a 12. And if you had poor stamina, it started at an 8. And if you took an injury, it also took two points off. Um, and if you rowed, you lost one just from the exhaustion of doing that. If you rowed by yourself, you lost two. And so the oiler rowing by himself to, for two eight-hour sessions before y'all figured out the thing really hurt your exhaustion score to begin with. Um, and bailing made you lose a constitution score, just in general, because you were in the water exposed to it. Falling in made you lose a constitution score. Failing to get in the boat caused you to lose an exhaustion point. Um, and so, like, I have y'all's numbers, and uh, the cook had a one left on exhaustion. Um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, oiler had zero. The correspondent had a two left. Uh, and wow. the captain had a three. Um, and on your constitution score, the captain had a four. Uh, the, the cook had a one. The oiler had a six because it didn't bail that much, and um, really all your constitution you lost was from falling in the water. <laughs> uh, just for a little bit. Yeah, just for a little bit. Uh, and the, well, the at that time that you jumped in on purpose. Oh, yeah, we're that time. <laughs> <laughs> and the correspondence was at a one. Uh, I was going to say, mine had to be yeah, real, low. real low. Because um, I was bailing, like, the whole time. And sleeping <laughs> got you one point of, like, constitu or exhaustion back, and eating something got you a point of constitution back. Um, and not having eaten or not sleeping for, if not sleeping for 24 hours over that, you started losing one per eight hour shift of exhaustion and not eating something for over 24 hours or drinking water for over 24 hours, you started losing one constitution for every eight hours that you went. So um, I was just sort of keeping these numbers going on the, the back burner. I was honestly going into this afraid y'all were going to starve because I was like, are they going to be able to get this food? And that ended up being like the least <laughs> of your worries. You end up with a good deal of food. You're welcome. I really, I really thought more of us would have been dead. I was, I'm, I'm genuinely surprised that three of us. Well, made so it. and I only died <laughs> because I was so good at my job. So basically, I didn't. It's true. Die. I mean, it's true. Why I died That's true. Died doing true. what he loved. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. You'll be memorialized. And so, yeah. <laughs> and the way that final push worked was, the weather dictated how many rounds it was. Um, and so you, it started at five, was five rounds to get in, into shore. And I rolled if you decided to hang out and it could get better or worse. And it was literally just basically an even spread, but it could get down to three rounds or as high as seven. Um, and each round, be tough. you start out in the boat and it just progressively gets harder to make pro progress. So the, f the first three rounds, which y'all made it through, only one of the people rowing has to get, it's a four, a five, and then a six. And y'all did that each time. But then for the next three, both people have to make a four, a five, and a six. And the seventh one is also both people have to make a six. So it's going to turn unless you get a really like good weather attempt. And then you're swimming, and every round spent swimming is a point of exhaustion. And just falling in the water costs you a point of constitution to begin with. So really, like, you were down to the wire, uh, Griffin, mm. to begin mm -hmm. with. And then y'all swam those last two. And, and literally the last round of swimming was what killed you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have spread out my – I always got, like, a five and a six. If only yeah. I could have got, like, spread that out a little bit more. But, yeah, it was – Great job. I find it fascinating that it ended up in the same uh, thing. I hope <laughs> That's so funny to me. I hope, well, I mean, I mean, it sort of makes sense because the, the idea of the book and the story, which um, we'll dive into, is like the, the oiler is the strongest one. And 
it's a surprise at the end that he's the one that's dead because everyone you sort of expect it's going to be the captain because the captain's mm-hmm. injured and the captain's weak to begin with um because in the book the captain's the one that's injured and starts out that way in this one yeah i'll let y'all i'll let y'all figure out if you're going to get injured um and uh Ooh. so you think it's going to be the captain but the captain doesn't row doesn't bail and so it ended up being very similar to the way the book worked out where the captain when the time came to make the swim had the energy to do so and the oiler who kept taking all of the shifts and doing all of the yeah. work was exhausted by that time and it's there's a lot of messaging there from Stephen Crane about like the na- the s- nature and how it functions and it's being sort of like not fair there's no like fairness and sense of fairness in the books and stuff like that but um yeah also for on the boat you could go back and try to find anything that it was reasonable to get on the boat your first attempt was a, a DC2 to not get injured. Um, and it grew one for every subsequent attempt that that person made. So mm-hmm. um, you failed on your very first time correspondent. <laughs> and, and, oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Get that one out of the way. And meanwhile, the cook made two trips in there and was fine. <laughs> yeah. And grateful that he did. Yeah. Yes. The, the mm-hmm. bread came in handy. I also rolled a D6 so much. to see how much food you got when you found it. Rolled really well on that initial bread. <laughs> so what What and when is uh, the roll call? Um, so roll call is a new series that we run on here. It's every other week from the weeks that we do roll play. And um, roll call is um, sort of a podcast format. We... we do it on here on on twitch live and then we record it and we're going to put them out as podcasts but it's sort of our table talk where we talk go into a little bit more depth with some of the players and the gm and talk about the work of literature um that the work was based on and how you know other stories have influenced it and and a lot of things tied to role playing adapting certain works of literature some of the literary theory and analysis behind the work of literature so the one for this session, probably will, it'll air in, in maybe a month or so. Um, we're still like catching up on our backlog of all of those. But it normally airs on Thursdays at 5 o'clock. That's correct. Yeah, that's actually hosted by Kayla. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I want to thank everybody for playing. I hope y'all had fun. Uh, uh, they can find us at, um, they can contact us via email at uh, roll, uh, is it the dash of, da- nope, roll of play, R O L E O F P L A Y dash G at vt.edu. Uh, if you are interested in playing, and we're always looking for people who are VT community members, or you work in the Blacksburg, Christiansburg area, or you're just somebody who works with libraries and and likes to do library-related things, we would love to have you on the show if you want to come play uh, a literature-based one-shot with us. Um, They can all... Also, if you don't want to be on stream, but you want to be involved, you can let us know. We do, like, playtesting. We have producers who run the sessions and stuff like that. There's a lot of different roles for that. We also have other programming on this channel um, that you might want to check out. On Wednesday afternoons, we have Archival Adventures, which is hosted by Anthony Wright de Hernandez, uh, who is is kindly being our moderator today, um, in which he goes through the archives at Virginia Tech and um, sort of explores some things that we have that... um, are uh, interesting. I think you just kind of, kind of pull stuff randomly. It's it's really fascinating to go through some of this old stuff and, and see what stories there are behind it. Um, and so definitely check that out. And we're hoping to do some maybe some workshops and some like maker sessions and a whole bunch of things we got planned. But um, yeah, that's uh, and I know and I know um, I know uh, Media Design Studio A and Newman Library is uh, I believe open with tech lending um, and they also have um, board games and uh, so uh, you can grab a rule set or look online when you grab your book from the popular reading collection located on the second floor um, and uh, do your own little version of this and uh, in particular what's useful I have a a Yeti by Blue that's the microphone I've been using for this session and I believe uh, that microphone or the snowball and um, 
other tech like it are available at MDSA in Newman Library. So yeah. come get your stuff and uh, have fun. Yeah. And also, if you're interested in streaming and, like, starting your own stream and, like, how do you go about doing it, you can always come talk to us, too. Uh, we do consultations, and we're happy to talk about technology um, that we use and what you might be able to use. Um, and if you, like like Trevor said, if you're at VT and you're part of the VT community, you can check out hardware from us. And a lot of times it's the same hardware we use. Oh, also we're getting ready to raid Pixel Circus, uh, who is playing D&D 5e right now. Uh, so that's where we're going to be. Uh, definitely check us out again. Uh, our next session will be Alice Through the Looking Glass. It's actually going to be a sequel to our very first session that we ran. Uh, and we're going to do that in two weeks from now. Um, so that's exciting. I'll be the game master for that one as well. Uh, and looking forward to revisiting a set of characters for the first time. Yeah, I want to thank our players. Y'all did amazing. Um, I know it's a, you, depressing, <laughs> it's a depressing story of being lost <laughs> at sea and having, like, no help come from anywhere. But um, I think y'all embodied, uh, y'all made it fun, which... I don't know that the story I would characterize. It's a lot of things, but I wouldn't characterize it as fun. Um, <laughs> and y'all made it fun, and uh, y'all did an amazing job. I really expected more people to not survive, but y'all managed to sort of uh, dole out your dole out your resources and and plan pretty accordingly and get rest and stuff, um, and made it through. So we're super good at the sea and stuff. <laughs> yeah, like. Everyone survived, basically. Yeah, if we like been seven people. Mentally better than <laughs> there was all, all seven, seven people. people. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, big shout out to the chat because, like, yeah, that's been a lot of fun as well. Yeah, we love talking to y'all. But yeah, I think we'll we'll throw you over to Pixel Circus now. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.